Uh, good evening. Welcome to the uh, October 5th, 2017 Community of the Whole uh, budget discussion. And the first item would be the roll call. Hirsch. Here. Kittleson. Here. Swadley. Here. Reeves. Here. Majeski. Here. Engelberger. Here. Jensen. Here. Truel. Here. O'Connor. Here. Olson. Here. Uh, Bartlett, Borsma, and Johnson are absent and excused, so there are 10 present. Okay. Thank you, Lana. Bartlett, for, uh, for new moment. business, the first item is to review, authorize, and direct the proper city officials to approve the proposed 2018 Stoughton Utilities Budget and five-year capital improvement plan. And this came through the Utilities Committee, and I believe we have a presentation. And who would like to start? Okay. okay. Jamin, <coughs> would Thank start. you, Mr. Swadley. Um, I'm Jamin Friedel. I'm the finance manager with the utilities. Um, it's pretty confident coming into this week, but it seemed like 10 times a day, Bob would walk by like, you're doing okay? It's going to go smoothly. Don't worry. So got a little nervous as the week went on. But um, with that said, um, as, as we move through this, just interrupt with any questions. If you need further clarification, I'd much rather this be a discussion with open dialogue as opposed to me just kind of regurgitating a bunch of numbers to you folks. So it, just feel free to interrupt. You won't hurt my feelings at all. Um, with that said, I know it's, it's a new face up here. You guys have probably become pretty accustomed to what Kim Jennings said presented to you in previous years. Um, so that's a little nerve wracking in and of itself because you may think things have changed. Um, but overall, the theories, the premise, the idea behind our budget hasn't changed at all. We kind of have three key objectives that we're looking at and keeping in mind throughout the entire process. Um, first one is how are our rates doing? Um, do we need to start looking at any rate changes in the future? Um, obviously the CIP budget, what projects do we need to do versus what projects do we want to do and maybe some things need to be postponed or delayed. And then the third key objective is obviously financing. Do we need to issue any debt or look at any alternative financing options that are available? Um, so we have those three key objectives, same things that Kim would have been looking at in the past. And we have three key indicators for those, rate of return, unrestricted cash balances, and then of course debt coverage. So in and of itself, the process hasn't changed and the theory behind the budget hasn't changed, uh, even if the materials have maybe changed a little bit from what you're used to. Um, with that said, before we jump into the actual 18 budget numbers, I think it's worth taking a, a quick look back to see how 17 is going to estimate out for the entire calendar year versus what was presented to you folks in the 2017 budget last year. Um, so I'm going to kind of go through that very quickly. I'll go electric water, wastewater right in order. Um, again, if you have any questions as we go through it, just feel free to jump in. Um, electric, in terms of operating income, where we're estimating it for the rest of the year compared to what was budgeted and presented to you folks last year, we're actually looking at operating income lower than budgeted by about $250,000 um, and net income lower than budgeted by about $290,000. Okay. Um, there's two main reasons for that. Obviously, sales are down and our O&M is actually down as well, offsetting some of those lost sales. In terms of sales for 17 compared to what we budgeted and where we really think we're going to end up, there's three main things that happen. When the budget was presented to you folks last year, Kim had assumed about a 3% rate increase. The PSC saw fit to give us 1.7. So the 3% was factored into the budget, and in reality, we got 1.7. Okay. Um, the second reason is con electric consumption is actually down 2.5% through August compared to last year. And then the third reason is when Kim did the budget, she had to assume a 1-1 one, one effective rate increase, and we didn't get the rates implemented until April 1st. So that's the reason for the drop in sales revenue in 17 compared to what was actually budgeted. Um, O&M has also decreased by about $500,000. Again, that's mainly due to purchase power, um, lower consumption that we're actually seeing than what was actually budgeted for 2017. Um, water, operating, water operating income is lower than budgeted by about $75,000, and net income is actually higher than budgeted by about $16,000. Okay. Yeah. Do you have a slide that you're talking about? I don't. About? These are just old 17 numbers. We'll see them in the next slides, but okay. these are just kind of comparisons of what you'll see. Um, historically, I don't think you ever saw budgeted versus estimated, so the actual 17 budget is not in there. But I did want to touch base and kind of let you folks know what 17 looks like because that's our jumping off point, and it'll kind of help you to understand the 18 numbers a little bit better. But we'll see the numbers as we go through this. Um, Again, water operating income expected to be lower than budget by about $76,000. 
Um, again, operating revenues slash sales are down simply due to we're about four or five percent lower in consumption than we were at this time last year. So it's a big hit on our sales revenue for water. Um, the good news is our capital contribution income is going to be um, higher than budgeted by about $91,000, and that's for the Nordic Ridge phase, phase two project. So bottom line actually looks a little bit stronger than what was budgeted for water. Wastewater operating income is actually going to be higher than budgeted for 17 by about 13,000, and net income is going to be higher than budgeted by about 165,000. Um, surcharge revenue is going to be higher than what we thought, which is good news. And then we also are going to see about $165,000 in contributed revenue um, from the Nordic Ridge Phase Two project. That wasn't that wasn't in the 2017 budget. So, with that said, I just kind of want to give you an idea that of where the 17 numbers are going to end up versus what you folks saw last year. Um, in the actual budget presentation, because like I said, that's our jumping off point to the 2018 budget, and then you can kind of see where the changes go from there. So um, now we can actually jump into the 2018 budget. Um, actually scroll down to that page, yep. Um, two disclaimers before we go into this. Obviously, we take a very conservative approach. We kind of approach the budget on a worst case scenario type standpoint. We can't get too aggressive with our revenues, and we can't trim off a lot of O&M in places that we think we maybe could we do have to kind of prepare for a, for a pretty bad year in sales so again it's a conservative approach worst case scenario type budget which is probably pretty, pretty similar to what kim had presented in the past um, the other thing with this budget is it does not include any possible rate increases this budget was prepared using the rates that are in place as of right now to see where we end up for, for 2018 okay um, on this side, there's just one line I want to point out. The pilot line, you can see there, um, in total for 2018, since this affects most people in the room tonight, um, we're estimating that we're going to turn over almost $900,000 in payment in lieu of taxes in 2018 to the city. And that's for water and electric combined. So again, this page here is just the combined budget for 2018. Not a lot of comparatives here, but I did want to point out what the pilot is estimated to be for 2018. You can scroll on to the next page. Okay. Um, yep, this is the electric budget, and you can see there's some historical information there, 14, 15, 16 across. The estimated 17 numbers, which is what I was just uh, talking about, as opposed to what you saw in the budget last year and then the proposed 2018 budget numbers. Um, first thing is we're budgeting about a 3.29% rate of return, which equates to about $383,000 in operating income for electric in 2018. Um, you can see there that sales are estimated to increase by about 1.7% compared to 2017. Um, two reasons for that is going to be the first full year impact of our rate increase. Um, and we did build in a, a very small kind of growth assumption factor into those numbers. Uh, purchase power costs, which are... Right here, this first line, our anticipated increase by about 1.6%. Again, that's just due to some inflation in the purchase power costs, and then, of course, of course the growth factor assumption in there as well. <clears throat> um, depreciation is anticipated to increase by about 8.8%. Um, that's actually a pretty big number for a jump in depreciation expense. You'd usually expect between 1% and 3%, depending on the year. Um, but if you look at, at the capital assets going in for electric between 17 and 18 combined, it's almost $5 million. And over the last five years, the electric utility has averaged about $650,000 in capital assets going in. So that's why we're seeing that big jump in depreciation expense there. Um, same holds true with the pilot. We're increasing by about 10.2% or about $41,000 from 17 to 18. Um, again, that just coincides with the capital activity that's going on, on the electric side. Okay. Um, some other major assumptions that were in here that you might want to be made aware of, um, the 2.25% wage increase across the board, with the exception of a few utilities employees that were discussed at the meeting last week. Um, we did use a 1.5% inflationary cost for most of the O&M costs, the operation and maintenance costs, and we did use 1.5% inflationary rate uh, applied to the mill rates for the pilot. Okay. Um, GASB 68 is our share of the pension costs through the WRS. We don't know what that estimate's going to be right now, so we basically had to look at 16 to see what that is. It's impossible to estimate right now. In 2016, the, share, the electric share of those costs was about $57,000. That's kind of a wild card in this budget because we don't know what it's going to be. It could actually turn into a revenue in 2018. We're just not sure. So to be conservative, we went with 2016 number on that as a major assumption. Um, so any questions on the budget document itself for electric? 
and any of the changes from 17 to 18. Okay, you can go to the next page. Um, so these are a little bit hard to see, but I think they're in the packet that you had. Um, I like graphs, I like visuals. It kind of helps explain the numbers a little bit better. So the top graph here is actually our O&M costs. Um, the blue line is 2005 through 2016 actual. The red represents um, 2017 and 2018, and then you have the dashed trend line there. Um, you can see we're, there's a little bit of a gap between the trend and the 2017 and 2018 <coughs> amounts. The main reason for that is in 2017, we incurred a, a large amount of tree trimming costs, which kind of throws that trend line off. But other than that, um, looking at the O&M costs with inflation, it looks pretty reasonable to what the trend has been in the last few years. <coughs> Um, the next column, the next graph down on the left-hand side, this represents capital expenditures 2012 through 2018. Again, the red represents 2017 and 2018. You see we've been pretty stable 2012 through 2016, and then you see the big jump in 2017 and 2018, which explains the increase in depreciation expense and pilot, which is the graph just to the right of that. You can see it's kind of moving along pretty gradually, and then we hit 2017 and 18, and it ticks up due to those capital assets hitting the books. Um, the next graph down on the left-hand side is sales in kilowatt hours, 2012 through 2018. And you can see there's really no rhyme or reason. Electric is really a victim of the weather. It, it, it's hard to actually forecast this stuff. Um, but you can see the trend line has been going down. And for 2017, we've actually for, we're forecasting under the trend line in 2018 as well. The reason for that is actually the graph that's kitty cornered down from there. If we look at this graph, this is kind of interesting. This is the sales in kilowatt hours 2012 through 2017, and this is the actual numbers January through August for each year. And if you look at the 2017 number, the one that's on the far right-hand side there, it, we, we've had the lowest amount of consumption through August that we've seen in the last six years. And that kind of explains why we're forecasting such lower sales for 2017 and 2018. So any questions on the graphs here? Yeah. So you're, you're saying that we're doing less sales is that because of energy efficiencies and different light bulbs and all that or i think that going? has a lot to do with it and it was just a really mild summer mm -hmm. it just it really was um and you can see kind of the peaks and valleys on the, the sales and the total sales um you know 2016 was a little bit warmer less mild so we're going to see that pick up but some of it does definitely have to do with energy efficient and people are just more conscious of it too you know, when they see a rate increase, it's, it's the biggest part of the utility bill on the electric side. That's the number they see. They start yelling at the kids to turn off the lights and, you know, keep the air conditioning a little bit hotter and things like that. So, so with that said, with, you know, it looks like the trend is going down and that means less revenue. We don't want to just keep on hiking our rates up. Mm -hmm. How are you guys planning for the future to reduce expenses? I mean, is that in here at all to or? reduce expenses um again if you look at there are opportunities to re, to to reduce expenses it hasn't been analyzed that deeply the funny thing with electric utility is we're we're basically victim with wppi's purchase power cost you know wppi has been doing great things with renewable energy there's a big is it a solar farm that's set to come online in 1920 something like that <coughs> so they're making a really big effort to kind of reduce the rates. Again, this comes down to whether are we going to continue to see this mild weather going forward? I doubt it. Um, for the most part, a utilities expenses are generally fixed. You're looking at depreciation, pilot, things like that. On the O&M side, we can dig in and do a, a deeper analysis, but some things are just needed to be done. Can you give me what pilot means again? Pilot is the payment in lieu of taxes. Okay. Since we're a non-taxable entity, we still pay this payment in lieu of taxes, and we turn it over to the city every year. Okay. So. Um, I think we're actually the biggest taxpayer in the city, right? Oh, we are the biggest. <laughs> and we appreciate that. Thank you. I don't know if I have a question from Alder Person. Well, I just wanted to address that a little also as far as expenses. I mean, expense, exp expenses rarely go down um, because costs go up. And even though usage is down a little bit because of weather and that type of thing, we're also growing as a community. So, I mean, we're adding grid and you know, adding things to our uh, utility also. So. And it, it, it is hard to anticipate that growth. I'm glad you brought that up, Mr. Engelberger. 
Um, one thing I did leave out of this is the possible impacts of, of two big issues that are coming in, not issues, but two big kind of bigger developments coming in in, in 2018. It's the hotel and the senior center. I actually did not include those estimated revenue figures in the budget itself because we just don't know when that's going to be in service and I wanted to take more of a conservative approach to it. Um, but I think just just kind of a high level swag on this, I came up between seventeen to twenty thousand dollars in net revenue. So that would be actual sales, less our purchase power costs. So we'd be adding that to the bottom line. I think those those projects are going to be in place in April or May. Um, so we're, we'll probably see half of that. But again, it's hard to take into into consideration what the impact of the growth is going to be on us. We try to, but again, to take a conservative approach, um, we, we kind of have to leave some of that off at this point. And again, as I mentioned when I started, this is worst case scenario. Um, it, this mild weather is not going to continue. We're going to see peaks and valleys, and, and we're just a victim to the weather. Any other questions on the graphs? Okay. Um, but overall, you know, it, it's not all doom and gloom. The electric utility is still going to end up with a pretty strong year. Um, we'll be approaching five months of unrestricted cash on hand, which is pretty much where we want to be. Um, we'd like to see the rate of return a little bit stronger, but it's still a healthy rate of return as well. So I'm not anticipating looking at rates. If everything holds true and we see no growth and the weather continues to be this mild, late 19, I'd maybe start looking at electric rates, but nothing in the near future at this point. So, okay. So that's electric. Um, water's set up the exact same way here. Um, overall, we're budgeting a 2.7% rate of return. We're allowed 5.25 from the PSC. Um, this equates to about $149,000 in operating income. Um, and you can see here, it's kind of a funny number, but we're budgeting sales growth at 0%. I know there's probably gonna be some questions on it, but hopefully the graphs will explain that. So maybe we can address those then. Um, O&M costs are anticipated to increase about 2.74% or $28,000. Again, this is just general inflation. Our wage increases, and then in 2018, we do have uh, a, well, a well rehab, well number seven rehab, that's budgeted for about $25,000. So that, that is most of the jump in the 2018 O&M costs. Okay. Um, depreciation, pretty straight across the board, 3.1% increase basically what we would expect in, in an increase in depreciation expense with new capital assets going in. And then the pilot's increasing by 6.1% up to $454,000 coming from the water. Okay, um, some other major assumptions in the water side, again, the 2.25% wage increase across the board with the exception of a few employees. Um, 2%, I use the 2% inflationary rate for O&M and then the 1.5% for pilot for water. Um, we've been seeing a little bit higher inflationary rates on the water side as opposed to the electric side, so I did increase our inflationary rate a little bit. Um, the pension side of the costs in 2016 was $20,000. Again, we can't estimate that at this point, so we had to throw it into 2018. That could really move this budget up or down depending on what it, what it comes in to be. Um, and then again, to address the hotel and senior center, we're looking estimating around four to five thousand dollars in net revenue a year from those two buildings on the water side which has not been factored into this budget at all so uh, moving out of the graphs they're set up the exact same way as the electric you can see the O&M there with the trend we're just a little bit above the trend gap there um, but for the most part it relates to two big expenses in 2017 we had an eighteen thousand dollar meter chamber replacement program that we weren't quite anticipating um, and then in 2018, we have the $25,000 well rehab, and that's why you kind of see that gap between what the estimated and budget numbers are and what the trend is actually going to be. But other than that, it looks pretty reasonable compared to, to what the trend is. Um, capital expenditures, the, the graph down there on the left-hand side, this is 2012 to 2018. Uh, it's, it's been pretty steady. 16 and 17 are about the same. We see a little drop off in 18. Um, the water capital expenditures really do pick up in 19 and 20, though. We're looking at about a million dollars a year um, starting in 2019 then. Uh, pilot, um, as, go, as, as capital expenditures go, so I'll go with the pilot. Um, I should throw in here that there's some major assumptions within the pilot calculations themselves. We know the base number. We know what we're calculating it on. The, the problem is we don't know what the assessment ratio is going to be or the, or the mill rates. So that's kind of, it, it's a shot in the dark at this point, so it could go up or down. Uh, but this is kind of the best guess estimate that we have for the pilot at this point. Um, the next graph, the sales in gallons, 2012 through 2018. You can see what this has been doing the last five years. It's either been decreasing or stagnating. We've basically been staying at the same level since 2014 in terms of sales on the water side. 
the trend line is shooting down. Um, I'm never going to reduce our consumption, so I basically leveled it off for 2017 and 18. And that's why on the previous page you saw that 0% sitting there for sales because we just see, we don't see the growth yet. Hopefully we see it, but or we have a hot summer and a lot of people are out watering their lawns or something. But again, a lot of this is water conservation. People are more conscious of it, and we did have a very mild summer. Um, the graph kitty corner to that again, same as we had in electrics. This is sales in gallons 2012 through 2017. This is January through August of each year. Again, the last number on the right there, 2017, this is the lowest total we've had in the last six years. So any questions on water? Yeah. Well, it was actually going to be for both. It was just kind of what's, what's I, I don't quite understand what's going on with the pension expenses. The pension expenses, so all we're all in WRS, the Wisconsin Retirement System. Even though that's held in a trust, um, we can't touch it. The trust manages it. They have their own audit done. Um, at this point, it's fairly well funded. I think it's almost 100% funded at this point, but it does go up and down a little bit. In any given year, if it's not fully funded, we have this thing called a pension liability. Somewhere along the lines, the Government Accounting Standards Board saw fit to take assets that are in a trust fund, audited their standalone fund, and say, you know what, you cities and utilities have to share in all of this. So sometimes when we're more than funded, when the WRS program itself is overfunded, we'll actually see revenue. Um, it's a non-cash expense, it's in and out, it ebbs and flows, it's really just called, it's basically a deferred cost on our balance sheet and our income statement that just goes up and down with how the WRS actually does in any given year. And unfortunately, we're victims to actuaries and we have to wait till we get those numbers for 2018, which we probably won't see till January 19. Okay, yeah, because that's where I was curious about the massive swing from, from 2015 to 2016 across it. I mean, from, again, being, uh, a, it would appear to be a getting a gain to, to having yep. $100,000 in pension expense in, in 2016. So I was curious as to where that, um, what was going to happen in 17. And well, what that does well there's, other, there's other items in there. Um, the, the miscellaneous income and the expense on the, on the, the 2015 side, there's other items in there. There, there may have been some other miscellaneous income that is causing that swing. Um, I think it, I think it did swing quite a bit from 15 to 16 on the Gatsby 68 side. I think we actually had, I wasn't here, but I think there was a revenue side. I think we actually had revenue in 15, and then it dropped down to an expense on 16 and okay. 16. Yeah, that would make sense because I mean, again, yeah. it's it's a pretty dramatic shift at least yeah. in, in each of the categories. And it is, um, from a regulatory standpoint, if you folks care, the pension expense itself doesn't get factored into our operating income for rate making purposes the PSC was at least smart enough to look at that and say you know what we just really don't care what this does because you're never really going to see it um, it's just it's an in and out you're never going to see cash in or out so they they did back that out for regulatory purposes where we don't show it as an operating side um, and it doesn't factor into our, our actual rate of return so at least they were smart enough to do that thank you so um, overall, water it, water struggles every single year. Um, we're looking probably between two and three months worth of unrestricted cash, pretty low rate of return. Um, I did request the rate case template from the PSC. Um, I'm hoping to file something by the end of this year. It's time to start looking at water rates again. Um, again, just due to the stagnant growth here. Um, and hopefully we can get something filed by the end of next year, or the end of this year. So, any questions on water? Uh, moving on to wastewater, if this wasn't exciting enough. This is actually the least exciting budget we have. <laughs> um, again, you can see the sales here. Uh, we're, we're sitting at 0% growth on the wastewater side, as goes water, so goes wastewater. Um, and O&M costs, we really don't have any major expenses like tree trimming or um, well rehab or anything like that scheduled for 2018. So we're pretty much just seeing about a 2.2% inflation in wastewater O&M for 2018. Um, same kind of major assumptions, 2.25% uh, across the board for wages, with the exception of a few employees that we talked about. 2% um, inflationary rate was used for O&M. You'll see wastewater doesn't pay over a pilot, so that didn't factor in here. Um, and depreciation basically stayed on par with what it has been in previous years. Um, the hotel and senior center, I was estimating about ten dollars to $12,000 in net revenue coming in once that's on, on board. Again, that's an annual. Um, estimate so maybe take that in half cut that in half and we may see that in 2018 if those get up and running um, any questions on the wastewater document itself 
Okay. Um, on the graph, set up the exact same way. You can see, you can kind of see this on the far right, um, the gap between the trend and what we're estimating for 2017 and 2018 for O&M, really not much of a variance there. We're kind of following the inflation trend with wastewater. Um, capital expenditures are staying pretty steady, 15, 16, 17, and 18, no big swings there. Um, once we hit 19, 20, and 21, we're going to see a pretty big jump in capital expenditures. We're jumping to over a million dollars a year um, on the wastewater side for those three years. Um, sales and gallons, which is actually the graph below it, um, for the annual 2012 through 2018, you can see it, it, it's kind of going along the same, same way that the water was, either dropping or stagnating along the way. So again, we just leveled off our consumption for 17 and 18. And if you go up kitty corner from that, this again shows the sales January through August. Um, and again, 2017 is the lowest consumption total we've had through August in the last six years. So again, that explains the 0% increase in revenue from 17 to 18. Um, any questions on the water or the wastewater graphs? Okay. Um, overall, again, it's not all doom and gloom. Wastewater is still going to have a pretty strong year. We're going to have about five to six months worth of unrestricted cash on hand and strong debt coverage. Um, I should mention all three utilities are going to have strong debt coverage for, for 2018, so that's not a worry on that side of things. Um, we are required by the DNR to actually look at wastewater rates every two years. We're scheduled to do that. I'm expecting an increase at this point basically to eliminate the rate shock of what 19, 20, and 21 could possibly have on the capital expenditure side. The nice thing about wastewater rates is we're not regulated by the PSC, so we can do step increases. We can, we can increase them gradually, so it's not going to be this big jump that you're going to see at one time. We can jump them every six months just in small increments just to kind of build up um, and reduce that impact of what's going to happen down the road on the capital side. <clears throat> so any overall questions on wastewater? Okay, um, this is the last graph I'm going to go over. Actually, this was this was actually just more for my comfort level, and I actually thought it was kind of interesting. Um, so you can see wastewater, water, and electric across the board there. The red lines on the bottom are actually, they represent consumption for 2012 through 2016, January through August. And I was asking myself, does that really matter when I look at January through August consumption compared to estimating out the rest of the year for 2017? So the red line represents the January through August consumption and the blue lines up top actually represent the annual consumption for those years. And you can see they basically line right up. So wherever we were at through August is pretty much how the year shook out as well. So it, it's just kind of adds a little more comfort level on how we're estimating 2017 for the rest of the year. And that's all this really represents. So, but that's all I have for the budget. Any questions? Yeah. Go ahead. Um, you're saying that you're expecting something to happen in 2021. Could you refresh my memory that you said that there's a spike or something that's capital for wastewater? Yeah. Um, that just refers to the capital uh, expenditure side. So it, we've been pretty stable, spending around between eight and five hundred thousand dollars on capital expenditure side on the wastewater from 15 pretty much scheduled through 2018. 19, 20, and 21 are scheduled to be big spend years. So that's why I'm kind of looking at rates now, mainly because we have to, because the DNR says we have to, um, but also to maybe get something in place just to kind of build up the reserve funds to start paying for those projects in 19, 20, 21, so we don't have that big rate shock two or three years down the road. And if I could perhaps add just a little bit, uh, right now, uh, of course, we're in the adaptive management program. Uh, uh, coming out of Madison Metro and everybody in the uh, in the Ahara River Basin uh, but uh, we're looking at our draft permit right now and uh, permits are normally every five years uh, uh, this one is shortened and we're focusing now on studies that they want us to do and the potential for ammonia treatment down the road I think what we're seeing right now is uh, time to do some planning uh, we think we can meet everything uh, uh, with perhaps limited chemical addition. But the thing about uh, uh, wastewater, uh, uh, adaptive management is really helping us a lot on phosphorus removal. But there are other things that still have to get done. And so the, we kind of predict the studies, uh, and you're going to see in the, the wastewater CIP the amount of studies that we have. There will be more of them, and I think. Uh, 
when you think back, it's a plant that went online in, in 1975. We've had a number of major projects over there, so I think we've been keeping it up. But we always had the understanding that ammonia, ammonia would come to the forefront at some time and uh, perhaps some other things as well. Uh, uh, the Clean Water Act is, uh, is ongoing and what, uh, what they really want to try and do and what I always thought when I was a regulator is eventually we'll get to a point to where it, it won't be distilled water but it's going to be pretty close to it coming out of the plants. And, and that's a good thing, uh, but, but we're looking to the future as to what has to get done. And, and to add on the rates too, if we're looking at water and wastewater and we're talking about increases, everybody you know gets a little. It, it's a it's a it's a point that people get upset about anytime they hear a, a, a rate increase, whether it's water or wastewater. Um, the utilities committee folks actually brought this up, and it was, it was a good point. So I, I went on the PSC website and I looked at water rates and I looked to see where we're at statewide. Um, as of right now, the median the median residential bill in Wisconsin on the water side is about twenty six dollars per month, twenty six thirty one. Um, the average residential bill, the average, not the median, is $28.61, and right now Stoughton is sitting at $21.80. So even right now, we're lower than the median and the average, and that's statewide as a whole on the water side. Um, on the wastewater side, we're kind of in the middle based on the information we have. Wastewater information is a little bit harder to get your hands on because it's not regulated. Um, but just for instance, East Troy, um, their average monthly which is annual cost is about $709. Um, if we look at where Stoughton is, our annual wastewater bills are about $318. Um, just for reference, my parents live in Toma. Every time they come down here and look at my bill, they complain because they're paying about $450 a year in wastewater bills. So even our waste on the wastewater side, we're still pretty competitive from a statewide perspective. So. Last question. I mean, you have a net income with electric of 375 water 83 and wastewater of 80 which is about I don't know 4 or 40 what what do you do with that net income that well electric and water and again you have to keep in mind that not all net income is cash um, so it's not like we're just pocketing three hundred seventy five thousand dollars of cash on the electric side um, if you look at our our operating expenditures and everything, you know, depreciation is a non-cash item, things like that. So the cash flow in is a little bit higher than that. Um, we we do with that money basically what we do through the budget planning. Um, the thing with water, water and electric is the PSC allows us to earn that money, and the intent of that is to basically keep the system reliability up and running, and that's the intent of that money. To use it for upkeep or maintenance? Or? Maintenance, capital assets, anything like that that it needs to go to. And the PSC regulates us. If we were ever to go way above our rate of return, they would start making us give money back. Um, as of right now, we're below our rate of return for both electric and water. All right, thank you. Any other questions? Otherwise, um, motion to approve the budget, utility budget. Second. Okay, there's a motion by Engelberger and a okay. second by Troll. This gets recommended to council then, or? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yes. And um, any more discussion? Yes, Bob had something. No, I was just going to touch a little bit on the CIP, but for us the CIP is really a part of the budget. Uh, if I can just uh, touch on it a little bit, you sure. can kind of see uh, uh, pretty straightforward. We do bring consultants in every five years, talk with staff look at what's been happening in the system and then change our priorities and, and you're going to see in our CIP the uh, really we're partnering with the city on uh, their projects uh, in 2018 and beyond and then we do replace some equipment as well any more discussion or questions or so the motion is actually the, pa the resolution. This is, is the just packet. no. This is just for the budget, and it, I right. thought we were going to do the CIP separately, because that's what the resolution is. I think the resolution is just for the CIP, right? It's, utility. It's the, the, the resolution that's in the packet is is to approve the utility budget and the five-year CIP. That, that's what I was assuming you were moving. Well, I, I guess I was confused. I th I thought it was a separate thing. I think you split them at the utilities committee. We did, yeah. And if you want, split them here or, uh, uh, and I'm ready to touch on the CIP. 
Well, it's up to how you want to do it. It's your motion. We can do whatever you want. We can so you're saying the resolution does include both? Uh, I didn't what's think in the it packet did. is the resolution. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's why I was assuming you were Well, moving. then let's, let's go through the CIP then okay. before we do that. That's fine. Okay, then you have this in your packet, and uh, we'll start out on the, on the electric end. And I'm going to focus really uh, on 2018. Uh, confidence level very high on 2018, 19, it'll start to get a little fuzzier. Uh, but for the most part, you can see that uh, uh, the, uh, the big project for next year is, the, of course, the West Substation has already started and you'll see some groundbreaking there next week uh, materials have been arriving for some time uh, so the uh, the distribution side of the west sub and uh, 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 is is in here uh, the west construction or the west substation commissioning is in here that's going to be the actual installation of the materials uh, the other big project that we're looking at for 2018 uh, is going to be from Aka Road to Haugi Road uh, on uh, State Highway 138. Uh, what you see is, uh, again, with, uh, I think, the 200-plus miles of, of uh, uh, circuits that we have, uh, we always estimate about a half million dollars a year uh, to continue to bring those up to uh, uh, quality service. The, uh, you may have heard me mention that... Uh, uh, every year, I think we look at 20% of our system and inspect. That's a requirement of the Public Service Commission. And then we, in turn, replace poles, conductors, lightning arresters, or whatever throughout the year. Uh, the other uh, bigger item for next year is going to be a, uh, a dump truck that, that electric water and wastewater uses. Uh, you can see it's uh, 2008. Mileage isn't as important to us as ours. but. Uh, so that'll be the, uh, the CIP for the electric division. Water division, uh, you can see uh, we're on Christie Lane and we're on the east part of the city, uh, Vernon Academy in Franklin. And uh, we're partnering again with uh, uh, the city on uh, some street rebuilds there. Uh, we're always replacing water meters. Uh, Public Service Commission has the requirements. We test so many, we install so many. Uh, we're looking at the lead program and the lead replacement program, but like you've heard me mention here, uh, we're still uh, uh, looking at what's going to be coming out of the capital as to what we're going to be able to do. Uh, I do know that if we, uh, if we get some authority to work on the private end of the system, uh, there would be a borrowing associated with that. Right now, we don't... Uh, uh, we don't qualify for these $300,000 grants that some communities get. Uh, so we're looking at it, and uh, hopefully we're going to be able to legally do something. Uh, small temperature gauge, uh, Tower 2 is the, is the tower up by the high school, and then the MCC upgrade at, at Well 4, that's uh, uh, at the intersection of Roby and Van Buren. I think that well went online in 64, so we're going to replace the electric controls in that. Uh, one service truck, a 2003, we're looking at replacing next year. On the wastewater end, uh, uh, a project just with wastewater, that's going to be in half of Forest Street uh, to do some work from the alley going down to Jefferson. Uh, then we're dovetailing on, on Franklin and the eastern part of the city. Uh, uh, with the city and with the water utility. Uh, doing some work uh, at our 8th Street lift station, the, that'll be the lift station that we think is going to function when the, the mill frat property eventually develops. But this is going to be maintenance to uh, keep that lift station operating. Uh, uh, I had mentioned adaptive management earlier. Our uh, contribution to that every year right now is $10,000. Uh, and then we have our normal uh, sanitary sewer and manhole rehab. Our big expenditure next year is to replace our 2005 jet vac machine. And uh, it's big and it's expensive. And uh, it isn't just used by wastewater. Uh, we also use that for hydro excavation. Uh, we al already have a buyer for it uh, uh, once we uh, see it leave our fleet. 
The last uh, one is a is a catch-all uh, regarding technology, uh, uh, looking at the phone system and some other technology issues. Uh, no roof replacements or anything else. Normally, that would fall into this. Okay. Is there any questions for Mr. Cardez? Otherwise, I do have a couple. Okay. Um, so on your your improvements you have it projected out through 2022 right we you know we uh, present a five-year CIP to the Utilities Committee and I think we follow uh, uh, what the city does right now we project out a bit bit further uh, a lot of people don't think you can do it but I we do and I think uh, in some cases we look out 20 years and uh, uh, the thing that we watch for uh, our, I think we touched on a little bit earlier um, what the regulations are Safe Drinking Water Act, Clean Water Act. It, we know that uh, there's there will continue to be expenditures even though we've got a lot of excellent groundwater in the ground and we're, and we're doing a very good job of treating it the, uh, at the wastewater treatment plant. But again, I think the way the laws are written we're going to continue to look at potential constituents Next year, we're one of the utilities in the country that will be looking at 30 exotics uh, where uh, some contaminants have been found out or found around the country, and we're going to be sampling. And I think, first time in my lifetime, uh, we're sampling uh, the, the parts per trillion. So the technology is there uh, in a way similar to uh, for folks that were around when we were in the Superfund program. Uh, it was the tetrahydrofuran that got us involved with the super Superfund rules, and I think we were the only contributor of tetrahydrofuran in the country at the time. So everybody's uh, going to continue to look at more, ratchet those numbers down, and we project for what we may very well have to spend. So I, my question is, is, as you project out, and I know you work with Public Works, what can you do to help Public Works and the council, for that matter, communicate to the constituents of potential projects in their neighborhoods? So we don't, you know, we get the phone calls and the emails yep. every year. I just replaced my driveway apron four years ago, and now you guys are tearing up the road. Yeah, I think... Uh, uh, I think we've worked independently in the past, and I, but we're talking more, and I think we'll be working closer together in the future. Case in point, uh, we were sending letters out in January to some customers that were going to be affected. Uh, we probably need to be reaching out in January that if the city at the same time is replacing curb and gutter, and, and in this case, next year, the projects are going to be full dig projects. I see how those letters can go out in January, and maybe they're going to be instead of one page, two. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, once the budgets are approved, November 14, or your first uh, council meeting in November, if, if, if we can stay on schedule, we have a pretty good handle on, on putting uh, pencil to paper with the plans. We're gonna know the customers that are affected, and I think getting letters out at least with what we're looking at doing in January is very realistic. And of course, we're gonna to wanna to work with Brett and Rodney to make sure it's gonna be one concise letter that everybody understands. Then at the same time, just like last year, have the meetings up at the fire station training room where people can come in and talk over exactly what's going to unfold in the project. I'm kinda of interested in one, and uh, Van Buren in front of my house was constructed, reconstructed last year Next year, there's a possibility that in my backyard, uh, there's going to be some work, and I, I may get a sidewalk on Jerton Street. I don't know if I'm going to plant a shovel down there or not uh, to get down there and shovel that snow. But if that moves forward, we're going to want to make sure uh, uh, the electric isn't an issue, uh, and I don't think water and wastewater will be either from what I see in the system. But I think it'll be important to get those customers to hear early on that they're going to have a sidewalk next year sure and and I'm even talking you know years beyond that if possible yeah you, you know it, it, it's a good I it's a good idea and, and like I mentioned with the CIP we're 
we're right on the ball as far as what's going to happen next year. In, in 2019, things can possibly change. And uh, uh, we're going to work with the city whenever there's a dig job. Uh, uh, we don't, I don't think we're going to see any premature failures on the water end or wastewater end, uh, but uh, they're going to continue to do projects in some cases in the newer part of the city that we won't get involved with, but I think you're going to see us on the water and sewer end concentrating on the inner city yet and uh, continue to go, but we'll try and partner wherever we can. Sure. And then my other question is uh, regarding some of the, uh, the projects that you have up there. For example, the phone system review. Yeah. Do you have the same system that the city does? No. Is there any particular reason why you wouldn't want to have the same system? Well, I think uh, whatever technology we're using right now, uh, we probably have had it for a while. So I think we may be close, but it doesn't it doesn't hurt me to punch nine in the number uh, rather than punch three, six, seven or whatever. So I, I, think, uh, I think we probably won't be the same. That could be a good question for John. But I think, uh, I think there are some sophistications that are a bit different. Because one of the things that came up in our discussions when we're doing our council goals is to have more collaboration between um, our departments, yep. specifically utilities in the city, mm -hmm. uh, because we feel that there may be some overlap and in some cases potential redundancy. And we're just wondering if you're having those types of conversations because when we're looking at the budget, we see that you're doing a lot of the same work as some of the folks in the city. And if there's a way to increase partnerships and efficiencies, we're interested in doing that. Oh, absolutely. And, and I would say, uh, uh, all personalities and people aside, I think uh, uh, the partnering that we have had with Public Works this year is phenomenal as compared to past years. And I think that that charge continues to move forward. And just like our, our efforts with Public Works, I would expect the same kind of collaboration with John. I think as we talk things through. Okay. Anybody have any comments or questions? Alder Person Majewski? Um, could you tell me how much money you're putting into putting under putting electrical lines underground this year? Can you say anything to that? In the budget itself it's not specifically identified. I could throw out zero at this point, but it may be buried some of it may be buried a little bit. In Sean's kind of five hundred thousand dollar annual costs that we do to improve the system and keep up reliability, um, but it's not a significant amount, if any. Okay, you're you're new, so this is my fourth year, and this will be the last year I do this because the next year I'll motion to take all five hundred thousand dollars of your net and put it into underground. Uh, first year I asked Director Cardez if he would consider putting underground wires in the old part of the community. And he said, geez, that, that would take a lot of money. And I gave him a, f I asked, could you do it in 40 to 50 years? And ever since that, that year, I pretty much asked the same question and I get the same response, which is basically right there, zero. My, my patience is at zero. Director Cardez, I'm telling you directly, if you do not budget for it this next year, I will motion to have your entire net put into underground. And I will make every effort I can along the way throughout the year for all your projects difficult until you do. Is that understood? I hear what you want. Thank you. Is there any other questions or comments? Otherwise, um, are you completed with your part of the presentation? I am. Okay. We do have a motion on the let table. Me, let me make the motion. Okay. Mike's going <coughs> to make a motion. Motion is to authorize and direct proper city officials to approve the Stoughton Utilities 2018 budget and five-year 
2018 to 2022 capital improvement plan, and I so move. Second. Okay. And there is a motion. So is there any question on the motion? And it's basically, these are recommendations to the council. And all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed. That motion carries. <coughs> uh, the next item on the agenda would be the 2018 executive budget. Item, Pardon me? Roll call. Budgetary item needs to be roll call. Do a roll call. Okay, Thanks. you can do a roll call. <coughs> What is this a recommendation? Hirsch. Aye. Hiddleston. Aye. Uh, Swadley. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Reeves. Aye. Majewski. Present. Uh, Ingleberger. Aye. Jensen. Aye. Is that a giggle? True. Aye. O'Connor. Aye. Olson. Aye. Sorry. <laughs> uh, motion carries on a vote of 10 to 0 <laughs> with a present. Okay, thank you. <coughs> and the next item would be the 2018 executive budget presentation. Mayor Olson. Absolutely, thank you. And I want to start by explaining again, as, as we have since 2012, we're again presenting to you tonight a service-based budget. Um, as a city, we provide services to our citizens. Therefore, it, it is a service-based budget that we provide to you tonight. I want to thank all of our leadership team members for their diligent work with me as we went through the budget again this year. Again, another, another tight budget, another difficult one to go through, but we bring to you a balanced budget this evening. 2018 initiatives is our employee compensation plan. Again, is key since we are a service-based organization our employees are what we do for our citizens they are the ones that provide our services so we're proposing in this budget an increased wage scale for all employees to remain market competitive this not only works or is important to us with attracting new employees when they're needed but it's also critical in retaining employees I'm proposing a 2.25 percent adjustment to the Springstead scale in our 2018 budget we're moving two leadership team members to mid. Remember last year we moved three from to mid, on, which is the market rate. And this year that's our public works director and our library director that we moved into that market scale. We have a change in health insurance carrier. This is to take advantage of substantial savings for 2018. A key initiative was to merge IT and media services and also our website budgets into one um, technology budget for 2018 moving forward. We're continuing the economic development initiatives. We're again funding the Landmarks Commission, their grant program uh, in 2018 to the tune of $5,000. In 2017, they requested four and are working on those grants as we speak. We're funding an economic development consultant, and this is a project-driven um, budget line item for $10,000. And again, continuing to fund the, rec the Redevelopment Authority consultant to the tune of $10,000 as well. Before we move forward, I wanted to, um, if we could back up just, there we go. Before we move forward, I wanted to just take a little um, step back to history. So in 2017, some things that we were able to include in this budget in 2017 was creating that, that information technology department, hiring an IT director, an information technology director, and merging that and media services into one. That was a big step for Stoughton. We've needed that and wanted that for many years, and, and let this year in 2017, we're able to make that happen. We hired a full-time mechanic who works side-by-side -side with our fleet mechanic down there to take care of all of the city's fleet, not just the public works fleet. The Landmarks Pilot Program I talked about just a minute ago, that was their first um, grant program. The library received funding for Sunday hours. And that was a, a continuation of their pilot that they had done successfully. Opera House had a few staffing changes as some employee changes took place. And then, of course, um, we were able to move one of our human resources employees to full time. So in 2017, this current year, we were able to make some, some big changes, some big steps forward. However, additional staffing that's been requested for our 2018 year um, our revenues simply don't don't support that, unfortunately. So I wanted to to present the the list, and 
our leadership team will go through it a little bit uh, more in detail as they walk through their budgets and their budget requests. But this is the list of things that we believe we could we could provide better services to our citizens if we could, if our revenues could only support these requests. A uh, the library intern, through a grant, we're able to have an intern come and assist at the library at the beginning of the year. But to continue that through September and December of 18 would cost about $4,250. We would like to increase hours for our youth services library assistant, a little over um, $4,800. We would like, as we struggle a little bit, um, as in the nationwide trend, to have full-time, or the request is for two full-time fire technicians. We struggle, as the nationwide trend, to have daytime firefighters. Um, it gets harder and harder. We need to continue to look outside the box to be able to provide services to our community as we're not able to fund two full-time fire technicians. Um, Scott, our Fire Chief Wagner, was also looking for some overtime for his um, fire inspector, um, and that you won't see in this budget at this time. Um, Chief Leck is looking for two new police officers. Again, those would be great. It's to a tune of $167,000, not something that this budget can support. Also, a new police clerical dispatch um, person that included benefits, a little over $34,000. Two new public works foresters. Um, a little over $147,000. Um, in lieu of the new foresters, we looked at it would be nice if we could increase contracted services around $56,000. 2018 is a tough budget. We aren't able to afford that or to, to make that work in our budget either. Um, a new parks maintenance person, um, $73,000. In lieu of that parks maintenance person, um, contracting was looked at for about $30,000. That's also not something you'll see in the budget. Increasing our senior center programming coordinator to full time, a little bit, little bit over $37,000. Um, we talked about fireworks the last few years. We've looked into um, fireworks and insurance, and our insurance carrier tells us that they will not insure the city of Stoughton to conduct fireworks. So if that's something the council wishes to to continue with, we'd look, need to look at a different way, not only to fund it, but to, to ensure that type of, type of an event. Our economic development director, both CACP and personnel are meeting the beginning of November to talk about what that could look like, and along with that, what that might cost. We don't know that at this point. Um, HR would like to have um, some assistance in their department as well. So um, if you put all the options together, and I, I want to be um, upfront, so that all of our elders as well as folks that might be watching and listening tonight understand we knew that we couldn't have 700 and <coughs> excuse me it makes me choke already <coughs> 725 thousand dollars worth of new employees that's not what we're asking for tonight what we were looking for is if you could provide the best service you can imagine right now for next year what would it take and that was the question i asked our leadership team members to tell us what would it take present to me a static budget and by static I mean what will it cost in 2018 to provide the exact same services you provided in 2017 once we have that number then take that next step for me and tell me as you'll see as they go through their options tonight what would make your department just that little bit better what do you think you would need to provide that next step in services and this is the list of things that is that next option list um, and they'll talk that through with you as we go through each independent um, budget. So here's our static budget, um, changes to our normal operating costs. I'm proposing that we adjust our compensation plan by 2.25% to remain market competitive, again, to attract and retain those employees. This is about $156,000. Our staff is how we provide our services to the city of Stoughton our staff provide quality services to our city and this is what we need to continue to, to provide those services. We've talked about and you approved a health insurance um, plan change. That's a reduction of 130, just about $135,000 over that original number that was brought to you last year for 2018. Our dental insurance will increase an estimated 2%. We're not, haven't narrowed down that amount yet, but it's about 2%. 
Our workers' compensation has increased by $30,000. General, general and liability insurance has increased $6,000. All of these insurances were not different than anybody else. All insurance costs are going up for next year. We're asking in this budget to um, increase the election budget for next year. Next year we'll have four elections, whereas this year we only had two. We're also asking to increase the amount that our poll workers and our chief inspectors are paid, and that's to remain competitive with our area communities and um, keep those best workers here in Stoughton. We're increasing legal services to the tune of $10,000. We've used um, Stafford and Rosenbaum more this year than we have in the past, and I predict that to stay the same for next as well. I'm asking for an increase in city funding for the youth center of $5,000. Right now the city of Stoughton pays about $21,000 for our salaried person down at the youth center. The rest of those salaries and wages are fundraised through the Friends of the Stoughton Area Youth Center, more specifically fundraised through the Bryant Foundation. The Bryant Foundation has always said that they wish to, um, to help us to assist the city of Stoughton in providing that that just a little bit better, but they never want to replace what a city budget should do. So they're asking that we increase by $5,000 for next year. As you know, they make generous donations to many of our departments um, through the city of Stoughton. Our debt service, we've talked about this before, but there'll be an increase in 2018 of $286,000. <clears throat> We've also had some changes to the revenue, and that allows us to bring a balanced budget. Net new construction for 2017 was at 1.75 percent. Remember last year we were at 1.9 percent, but 1.75 means an increase of $123,300. We've had an increase in building and electrical and plumbing fees to about $15,000, an increase in our police department fees, $10,000. Here's that increase in the um, Friends of the Stoughton Area Youth Center contribution, $6,400, $6, and an increase in court penalties and fines of $6,000. This year, next year, we'll see a decrease in utility pilots for those very same things that Jamin and Bob talked to us about, a decrease in $60,000 moving forward. There's a decrease in the state expenditure restraint program to the tune of $7,600 for us for next year and a decrease in motor vehicle fees, $7,000 for the city of Stoughton. As I said, we bring to you a balanced budget where our revenues equal our expenditures. Again, this wasn't easy. This was, um, it, it's difficult when you're looking at reducing items by $1,000 to bring that gap to, to close. Our operating gap when we began was $173,369. Through the diligent work of our leadership team, we've been able to close that gap. We'll continue the implementation of the Springstead study, proposing a 2.25 wage scale adjustment right in line with Dane County and other communities in our area, bringing two leadership members to midpoint, which is market. Um, again, we need to keep, we've, we've attracted, and now we need to keep those quality um, leadership team members. And it's also bringing our library employees into the study. They had not yet been brought into the Springstead study will do that in, in 2018. This includes a levy increase of $409,432, debt service $286,100, and net new construction of $123,332. So we'll continue to use levy dollars to fund most large equipment to support the daily operations of the city. We know that our um, equipment fund simply doesn't fund a new fire truck, um, so we'll need to borrow for that as usual. It simply doesn't fund some of the larger items, but for most of our large equipment, we're able to do that with our, our levy and within our, within our revenues. So that, that's a good story. Tammy's going to walk us through some of the rest of this. As you may recall, in September, the Common Council adopted the CIP for 2018. And in 2017, we borrowed for most street and capital equipment purchases for both 2017 and 2018. So what I've done is taken um, the 2018 list. It does include a proposed um, borrowing for the public works facility. I have $8.3 million in here, and of course that's an estimate. Uh, we didn't know what the final price might be. And uh, then uh, forecasted through the next uh, five years, the total capital improvements. 
in 2018, when you add everything up, it comes to $10.6 million, $10 million in um, building equipment, street stormwater, water, and sewer utility projects. This does include the city continuing to borrow $400,000 each year to support the large equipment purchases that you had adopted, I believe, in 2017. And then um, just a final point, uh, 2019 to 2022 cost are estimates and they may increase or decrease. Some of the years that are further out, sometimes they don't have everything included. Um, sometimes we usually concentrate on the, the years that are like within the next two or three years. So we'll work to try and develop that better going forward. Here's a list of the proposed borrowing for 2018. It includes the public works facility, and I did put in the four options that were um, had been presented, as well as uh, the refinancing of the note anticipation notes from 2015 or 16. Uh, it comes to about $4.1 million. Do you want to take this All one? right. We saw you all cheating and looking ahead when you came and sat down at your seats tonight. And this was on your seat, so it's it's the bottom line projection as we like to, to bring out every year. The 2017 tax levy has a 1.755% net new construction, equals $123,332. Our levy increase includes a city tax rate decrease of 4%. Our mill rate for next year is decreased by 34 cents. So the total tax change is a reduction of $34 per $100,000 home. And you might say, she's just been standing up here saying all the things we'd like to have, but we can't. And now you're going to decrease taxes. Well, that's all this, this strange little um, levy limit that we have, as well as our assessed value, which we were fortunate to have that raise um, this last year. So with a, an increase in our assessment, and our levy limits, um, it's how the numbers figure out, Tammy. You're going to have to help explain mm -hmm. the And the assessment detail. ratio, uh, we asked the assessor to try and help us establish what the assessment ratio might be. We do not have the final numbers until November. So right now we're, we're merely estimating that that's where it's going to be. Prior year, I believe it was around 99%. Mm -hmm. So taking that information, uh, you take the proposed levy and divide that into the assessed value assumption, and that's how we come up with your $8.12 tax rate for 2018. Okay, so let's look at the history. What has Stoughton's um, tax history looked like? So we started all the way back with 2009. We had a 2.94% increase. Um, and this year, again, as we said, it's a decrease of 4.02%. We know that next year we'll have a different picture. We're going to be borrowing for the public works facility, and that will change um, how that all looks next year. But for 2018, we can enjoy a decrease in our taxes. So we bring you a balanced budget tonight. Uh, we're going to have some workshops coming forward, and I think we'll come back to this slide at the end of the evening. But we'd like to take you through tonight. You have the, the green sheets in front of you at the table. Tammy's going to put it up on the screen and we'll walk our way through some of that for you this evening. Go get mine. So the first sheet that you received this evening shows the um, Common Council. As you can see, there have been no proposed increases in the uh, Council itself. It remains at $47,005. The Judicial Branch, the judge is not present this evening. However, uh, there are some slight decreases, mainly due to health insurance. Uh, there was an adjustment where the um, insurance was shifted to the spouse. So there was a savings here of approximately $5,900. Otherwise, everything else remained the same in their budget. Step 
full screen. Um, yeah, the problem is each sheet is... Oh, it's all independent? Yeah. I see. Okay. That might be too big. <sighs> Next is legal. And as the mayor explained earlier, we looked at a $10,000 increase in attorney services based on the current year's um, services that have been provided or a 9.95% increase. Okay, and the next one, this is the mayor's office. Um, the the $100,340 includes the mayor's salary and benefits. It also includes Dane County Cities and Villages Association and League of Municipality membership, as well as the Stoughton Chamber of Commerce membership for the city of Stoughton. Commitment to community community commitment I read it backwards that is our um, Hall of Fame that we induct one new person into the Stoughton Hall of Fame every year as well as celebrating the volunteer and the business person of the year and now I'm going to step aside <clears throat> the next slide is the clerk's office and overall in licensing we saw a reduction and there is a proposed increase in elections due to going from two elections in 2017 to four potential elections in 2018. A reduction in clerk administration, a lot of that had to do with um, health insurance savings, uh, council and committees, mayor and assessor, slight increases there. Page two. shows financial and accounting services and treasury management remaining the same for an overall increase of $6,500 or 3.53%. Tammy? Yes. Um, what's the, what's the $4,000 on the assessor? What's the change from this year to next year? The 4000 on the assessor. A lot of it has to do with just a reallocation of time, and when you reallocate a time, um, uh, benefits go as well. And we also, I don't know, Lana, I think there was an increase in some Board of Review time. I, it doesn't look like we've um, accounted any of Lana's time toward helping the assessor or right. putting together that Board of Review. So this $4,000, to me, it represents how much time Lana spends, spends putting together the Board of Re Review, the open book, all those types of things. It's all part of our budgeting for outcomes. How much does each service cost? And it costs part of her time to put that together. So, so again, the, the, answer, the answer to my question then in terms of the $4,000 increase, it really isn't an increase. You weren't capturing perhaps what her time was. Uh, Previously, yeah. it's more of a reallocation between line items. Okay, yeah. thank you. Greg, did you have a question? No, for Donna, uh, mm -hmm. wasn't, the, wasn't that included in the assessor's contract before? Well, the assessor's contract is for the cost of the assessor. It doesn't include Lana's time to put that information together oh, okay. and to coordinate those meetings and things. Okay. Any other questions or? Okay. Moving on to elections, and Lana can answer questions if we have some. In this budget, we're currently proposing, again, four elections rather than two in 2017, as well as a um, small increase to the poll workers and the poll, uh, the poll inspectors. Currently, poll workers are not required to work in their own community. They can go anywhere in the county. And in order to be competitive with some of our surrounding communities, we're recommending this small increase in order to keep the people who have all the training. Yes, Regina. Um, on this sheet, I couldn't find where Stoughton is listed of what we're currently paying the poll worker and the chief inspector and what we're increasing it to. Could that be explained? 
Okay. So currently, we pay our election inspectors eight dollars an hour. We pay our chief election inspectors eight fifty an hour. Um, the difference between the two is the chief election inspectors are ultimately responsible for your polling location. They have received the most training, um, and they are the ones that uh, oversee everything on election day. Uh, the the we didn't put them in the spreadsheet. This was just to show um, the other municipalities that we had contacted about their rates for their um, poll workers and election inspectors um, but we are proposing a increase for our election inspectors to instead of being eight dollars an hour to ten dollars an hour and our chiefs instead of 850 being eleven dollars an hour i believe the total increase was twenty five hundred dollars or i'm trying to remember ten thousand i believe it was about about four thousand. Four thousand, something correctly. like that. Yeah. So the rest of that cost is the increase in the actual two additional elections required. Mm -hmm. Any other questions on elections? Okay. Moving on to finance. You'll see the top three items, the RDA, the shared taxi service, economic development, uh, clerk administration. There's several reductions throughout here. Uh, the number of that has to do with a, a change in the salary for the finance director. Um, there was a reduction there, as well as the savings in health insurance. Um, and then looking at our allocations again between these items and uh, reevaluating where our time is spent. Um, you'll note that on elections, it shows a huge increase because all three of us in, in the finance department are helping out at the various polling places, and with four elections, that's why that number increased. Moving on to page two. We have council and committee staying at the same level. City attorney services, those increased, well, we actually started charging for that, working with the attorney on issues. And then financial and accounting services saw an increase of $8,500. Treasury management, again, this reallocation and shifting of time uh, dropped $24,000. And part of that 20, oh, no, not that, that line, and I'm sorry. Uh, debt service dropped about $9,300. And then IT dropped $25,375. And what that was due to, uh, with John coming on board, uh, there were a number of software contracts that were paid by the finance departments, this line item for IT. So what we did was we took that amount and shifted it into the new IT media services budget area. So you'll see some increases in his line items that are offset by some savings here. What we're trying to do is make it more of a central IT, and, and we're, real, we're getting there where we're taking costs from various other budgets where people used to do those jobs and shifting it gradually to John. So we may find more in the budget and then um, take care of that next year. And just a clarification then, uh, the account yeah. 414, the, the, the city attorney services, that's once again, you're charging, uh, charging the department's time or, or trying to Yes, the department's time with working with the attorney. So that number is in addition to the number we saw earlier? It, it's our staff time for working with the attorney. Yes, that the attorney charges you saw before were just specifically the attorney's time. Okay. But and this, he bills us. This is for your This is time. staff time, right. Okay. And my question then is, is there any other attorney time that's charged <coughs> into another area? for example, the RDA or the planning? Right now, RDA costs are um, a separate fund, a separate budget. And his time, when he does work on specific RDA issues, is billed to the RDA's RDA fund. OK, and I haven't looked that far ahead. Is that number included in this? No, packet? it's not in here. But what I plan on doing is trying to get some of those other funds and present that information to you, either our next meeting or the one <coughs> following. Okay, because I'd be real interested in, in seeing what the total cost is for the attorney for everything they do. Mm -hmm. And then the other part of that would be to see if there's any other communities that have an in-house attorney and what the cost of that would be in, in comparison. 
The only the other downside to that, um, Alderman Swadley, is that sometimes the in-house attorney doesn't specialize and you still have to go outside sure. and you because I know we do utilize outside uh, personnel, labor attorneys mm -hmm. for specific purposes as well and they're a right. specific line item. So what I'm looking for specifically is just our general attorney costs mm -hmm. associated, you know, and whether or not it would be advantageous for us to at least look at that option. I, sure. I don't know if it is or not because I don't have any information. But if you could provide that, I think that would be helpful. I'll see what I could do. Thank you. Any other questions we on have some over finance? Here. Well, Go ahead. Along those lines, I think yeah. it would be helpful us with what um, all the person Swadley is saying is that it's not just, if I understand right, what their attorney fees, it's just not one single person because he has this whole office of experts and so I guess when you break it down maybe have how many actual attorneys we've paid during that year so if we make a decision to have an internal attorney or even starting to entertain that it's not actually not just one person it's multiple people because attorneys specialize in different aspects yeah okay thank you Anybody else have any questions? Otherwise, please continue. Okay. Moving on to the assessor. This um, this budget stayed uh, the same. The contract uh, runs through the end of 18, so there was no change at 47.5. Oh, Lana? Uh, contract stood through 2020. Oh, I apologize. 2020. Thank you. Our next budget is HR risk management, and I know AJ is here to listen on that. Let me just blow this up here. Got it? Yep. Okay. So as um, Mayor Olson had stated, we did prepare a static budget, um, and that's what's presented here. I did have $9,000 in for um, a part-time LTE to help with um, employee self-service, but that's been put aside. So um, looking at personnel, that is pretty flat line. That includes the increase in 2.25% uh, for employee wages. Under the insurances, uh, risk management, you're looking at a 14.2% increase. And that's where you're looking specifically at um, the workers' compensation with a $30,000 increase there. Uh, 20, we had 2017 activity at 153,000, and uh, we're projecting at 2018 at 159,000. So that's where that difference is coming from, even though our experience mod did go down. So the amended budget was 129. So a grand total there of 14.2%. Other expenses, we're going to stay static there. And then a uh, grand total for the budget is 569,251. And I just uh, wanted to quick go through on the health insurance piece here. Um, we did have that savings of 134,663 over the original renewal. And then the dental, we're still waiting for final numbers on that, but we are looking at 2%, and that's what we've um, put in there as of right now. And then just a reminder here on the, the compensation plan overall, I just want to speak to that a little bit as the HR director. The employees, you know, this change like we talked about last time to courts, that's a major change for employees. And there's $134,000 in savings there. And Mayor Olson had talked about with that 2.25%, we're looking at a total cost in the budget of uh, 156000 So we've already offset that by the savings that are there in the health plan. So I really hope that you take that 2.25% to, to heart and understand the importance of market competitiveness and keeping our Springstead study um, competitive so we can both attract and retain staff. It's very important. So again, that's how I was looking at the 2.25 when they said that there was a gap there. Um, being able to come forward with that health insurance, the employees have made a change, really helped on that bottom line with making the change to quartz, but the 2.25 would be a, a great um, way for us to be able to retain staff and attract staff. Any questions? Uh, go ahead, all the person true. Hey, if you could it, just uh, following up on the question that was that was uh, before you were, again talking about attorneys. If you yes. could also break out your costs because we know that's a separate you use a, a separate firm. Sure. Just just as a part of our overall report, yeah. so you could see what our our costs are. Absolutely. So 
So I have a couple of questions and comments. And, and first of all, congratulations for the, the health savings. I know Thank that's you. a lot of work and it's a lot of stress in order to to communicate that to staff, but it's it's an important thing that just needs to be done. So thank you for doing that. A um, couple questions. I guess the first one is, is have you explored any um, opportunities of partnering with utilities on some of the services that HR is providing? I mean, what is your, I guess, what is your relationship with utilities as it relates to employee issues and and services such as payroll yeah um, Tom and I are smiling at each other at each other because that is one of the um, and tasks as well um, items that the personnel committee has tasked me with so what we're doing at this point um, we're getting quotes from uh, different firms to come in and take a look at that with an objective standpoint and explain to us what makes most sense for the payroll system so that piece we are already starting to, to work on. And depending upon what we find out from that study, the personnel committee at that time will direct me as to what they want for next steps. In regards to, I think you said personnel, discipline, um, they are completely rolled into our compensation plan. I know you heard Jamin tonight talking about 2.25. Um, those other exceptions that were made, council's already approved. So we've worked exclusively together on that, as well as um, implementing the Springstead plan there for their staff. Same thing with any type of disciplinary or any hiring, firing that takes place down there. I'm in, involved 100% in that with them. So they have involved HR okay. exclusively. So then my, my final question is, is does this uh, pay increase, does that include a performance-based pay or is this across the board? Or? No, what we're doing here is this is keeping the Springstead, the study that you had seen with the scales, you know how we had the grade levels and the steps. What this is doing is keeping that scale market competitive. So we're not giving anybody an increase in steps. What we're doing is doing an increase across the board to keep the scale itself competitive. Because I guess my understanding from last year is that you were going to implement a performance-based pay program this year. And just wondering yep. where we're at, what, what's Absolutely. going on with that. Um, what we had said is we would look into a performance-based plan. What we ended up spending this year working on with the <coughs> personnel committee is how do we update the Springstead study. Right now what we're working on is coming forth with a review system and we're working with CIVMIC on that. We have Ann scheduled from Springstead to come back in in November and we'll be talking with her about options of how do we move staff through. We don't know if performance-based is going to work for the city and we talked about that before. It was just the one that kept coming up as the best option that everybody was talking about. We haven't done any research on that. Mm -hmm. So that's our goal for 2018 is to look at that and also to implement those performance reviews so those are at least happening and that the managers are trained on how to accurately give the performance reviews. So if we move that direction, we've already laid the groundwork. Sure. I think it's important whether you move that direction or not, you do the evaluations you because you know how else are people going to get the communication they need you to bet. improve and at least get the, the recognition they deserve for, for the work that they do. Um, so I'm real interested in that. Have you had any indication from Springstead on whether or not other municipalities are, are going in that direction? Yeah. I had a conversation with Ann today, who is our consultant from Springstead, and we were talking about what are other area communities doing. And it depends upon what we're looking at providing when it comes to compensation as an overall um, plan for employees. What do we have budget-wise? budget, budget -wise? More importantly, what the city of Stoughton we're thinking needs to look at in 2018 is we have employees sitting within the scale, but we don't know if they're in the right place. In fact, I can tell you they're probably not at the right place. Because if you remember last year what we were doing, I'm sorry, the first year, was moving people to minimum. We had employees that weren't even at the minimum pay. As you heard the mayor say tonight and talk about last year, we were moving the, just the leadership group to midpoint, which is quote unquote market. We know that our staff falls on both sides of that midpoint and we need to figure out how do we have uh, those employ employees appropriately uh, graded and stepped. We know the grades are correct now, we went through that this year. Now we're looking at, is their step appropriate? We have a 20 year veteran who's sitting at step two. Is that correct? Well, what are the factors that determine what is a step two? And that's what we need to determine for 2018. Well, and, and the way I look at it is, you know, the bottom line is, is, 
you know, are we getting the productivity and the level of work that we expect out of them employees, mm -hmm. you know, steps aside. And I think that's something that concerns me about just doing the across the board because there's some people that deserve more than 2.25%, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. And there's several, I'm sure, that maybe don't deserve the 2.25%. So that's what kind of bothers me because when you talk about retention, we want to retain, you know, our best and brightest people. And if we're not rewarding them at the level that they've earned, that's really difficult for those types of people, you know, to handle that. And so I, I want you to be, you know, I'm sure you take that into consideration as you're going through these Absolutely. things. Absolutely. And obviously we're, we're limited with our budget, but at the end of the day, if, if we're giving out raises, that should raise the expectation bar and, and the level of service that the employees that we're rewarding are being able to provide. Right. And I, we want to give you the tools to do that, um, but we also, you know, we're told last year that you're going to be working toward this, and it seems like, I know it's been a busy year, but you haven't got there yet. And we've invested a lot of money into this process, and we want to. I want to support to finish it. But if we have the same conversation again next year, it's going to be really a difficult pill for me to swallow. Right, and Tim, that's not the goal. What ended up happening this year is we implemented through council's approval the grading to go back and look at the grading. So that implementation of that process had to take place. And then once we received all the information from those employees and the job description updates, we focused on correcting the grades. So, or looking at and um, validating the grades. Now, now that that's been done, as I just said a couple minutes ago, we're gonna look at now how do we move people forward? Do we really start with where they're at and we're, we're tied to this, is it pay for performance, what is it? I think more importantly, and as an employee, I personally feel more importantly, am I really where I'm supposed to be within the steps? That's more important to me than any increase you're gonna give me. So whether or not those steps, I'm appropriately in the appropriate step, it's more important that that step scale is accurate and market competitive, and then my placement into it. So I get, I get where you're going saying, yes, we need to be able to, to reward employee A over employee B who's performing better, but I think more importantly, we need to get our ducks in a row, making sure that the grades are accurate, then making sure that the employees are in the appropriate step, then figuring out how do we move them forward. This is not going to be an overnight process, one, two years. This is, if we're going to roll it out appropriately, we need to look at each step within it. And that is not something that we took into consideration or was even brought up to us when we started the Spring Step Stead program two years ago. The request for reconsideration was part of the initial rollout and never part of a discussion saying, in the future, if somebody doesn't agree, we're going to do this. Well, it got brought to our attention. It got brought to personnel. It got approved. So we had to go through that process, therefore slowing things up. So like I said, it's November. We're meeting with Ann. We're going to get the plan for 2018. Right. What do and we do? I guess the other point I would make as far as for recruiting, not all positions are the market is different for different positions mm -hmm. within the organization because of the specialized services that people provide. Obviously, in the area of public safety, you know, the market is dictating that we're going to just have to pay more money for public safety people because there's a shortage, there's difficult, there's a lot of competition. And some of the other areas, there might not be as much competition for them positions. So how do we balance that in order to take care of, you know, of those mm -hmm. folks as well? And, and, and you can say the same thing about utilities. Yeah. One of the really important things to think about is there's a labor shortage, period. So absolutely it's difficult to recruit in um, the police market, but it's equally as difficult for me to recruit for the front desk as it is to get a decent forester in here. So we're feeling it across the board. You talk to any private or government sector, and it's the same issue. Yeah, you can talk to me. I can People are that. jumping for small amounts, and it's that just a little bit to get ahead. And it goes back to post-pre-9-11. 
911. When employees were jumping all over, 911 happens, the market tightens up. It's very cyclical when it comes to human resources. And we're going back into the, it's getting to be a tight labor market, it's difficult to recruit, and it's difficult to retain that staff. And that's why we need to look at how do we make sure that those employees coming in and those employees that are here working day in and day out feel rewarded. And I think that's why it's important we've taken the step back, looked at the grades and made sure that they were accurate. Sure. We did make some changes. Yeah. Yeah, I understand and it's going to be tough, but we have to show that we're making those steps forward mm -hmm. and that we care about that. And I think one of the things right now that's that really, like you said, tough pill to swallow. For employees, they just took in their mind, many of them, a major hit. They've got to go out and find new health care, new providers. And I know it was the right thing for us to do, and I still stand behind that, because if it were my checkbook, that's the way I'd spend that money. But I would ask that you look as a council as a whole at that 134 and say, okay, now we can balance that against 156 that we've already, we've already taken that from the employees and, and forced a change. I'm just asking that you think about that as we're going through these difficult times. It's tough for us to retain staff. And one of the things that's always been there for government employees is what's called the golden handcuffs. And we're losing that because our, comp our, our standard compensation, our benefits are really good, but our compensation's down here. City of Stoughton has never been known to be market or above market. We're sub-market, and we're trying to get up to that market level. And that can be proven by looking at where the employee is compensated in comparison to midpoint. So yes, we have some staff that's over, but we have a lot of staff that's sitting on the lower end. Mm -hmm. So just food for thought there. And I totally get that. And part of my struggle is, is with the state of Wisconsin because they've made it really difficult for municipalities mm -hmm. to be competitive and to retain their employees, especially when we have as many needs as was yeah. pointed out by the mayor tonight and we have this cap a cap that we were locked in on because we were frugal. Right. So we're, we're being punished for that. So, you know, I guess one of the challenges I think for us as a council and as a community is is to be a voice. And I know we have, you know, our, our lobbyists and whatnot, but I, I think it's time for municipalities to step up and say, you know, state of Wisconsin, you're doing us an injustice we can't provide the services that the people in our community want and deserve and and we're not happy about it so that's my two cents worth so thanks one other for what you're one doing. other quick thought thank you tim one other quick quick point i wanted to make i don't know if you guys go to quick trip but i got a flyer in the mail and it was a recruiting flyer fourteen dollars an hour thousand dollars sign on bonus for full time five hundred for part time that's tough for me to hire people at wsto to hire limited term employees that work in the public works. That's really tough for us to compete against. Uh, you know, a CSO, those rates are driving up. McDonald's is paying more, Walmart is paying more. So it makes it tough for all of us. And that's why I say, you know, we made the right choice. And if it were my own checkbook, I definitely would have made the change with the health insurance. But let's stay competitive here, guys, so we're not out constantly recruiting and wasting that money long term that we've invested in somebody to train them. Let's keep them here. Let's give them a reason to stay. All the person true. Um, AJ, you also talked about the fact that you, you and your staff support the utilities uh, mm -hmm. and the like. My question is, are we able to back charge or do you currently back charge a percentage of a, a significant share of your, your time to it? There is an administration fee. I'm sorry. There is an administration fee that the city of Stoughton has charged utilities. And I'm digging for it. I don't have it right now, but I can bring that back. <coughs> Okay. Something like sixty-eight thousand, or I yeah, know, Tammy probably has it closer. Yeah, hand. I, again, given our earlier discussions this evening and operationally and the things, I, I guess I just would, would encourage you to, to make sure that we are appropriately charging uh, for for all of the time and effort that we put into that, so it comes out of our day-to-day -day budget. We currently charge a sewer utility administration of fifteen thousand four hundred, electric utility administration of thirty-five four. And water utility administration of thirteen thousand two hundred. Thank you. All the person leaves. Thanks, Tim. Um, did I did I hear you say that we had a thirty thousand dollar increase in workers' comp? That is correct. 
it, is that based on claims filed or? No. Um, what I had explained there, Lisa, is in 2017, we had an amended budget at 129725 I'm not sure where that number came from, but our activity in 2017 is at 153506 So that's why you're seeing that increase of 30000 Okay. Our experience modification, which is the number that shows what our claims are, actually went down. So there was not claims activity to support that. It's just that there was an amendment made into the budget that that number dropped. Thank you. I missed okay. that. Appreciate that. Any other questions? Otherwise, we'll continue. There's just one thing. Um, when I was going through and putting in the wages for uh, the three leadership positions from last year that received an increase to mid-level, for some reason, the 17 wages weren't at the right number. So you'll see that it says here a 10 um, or a 9.7 percent increase or a 10.7 overall increase. The, there was a difference in specifically for AJ was one of them of almost uh, what was it? $9,000. Yeah, $9,000. And then in the senior center, it was uh, about $6,800. So for some reason, those numbers were off. I just wanted you to know that. It, it's not she's not receiving that much of an increase for some reason the 17 number was off I hope that's not a reflection of my department that she had to go to a higher font size for you to see it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, as you can see by the police department's budget, it's pretty static as well. The bulk of the increase is in personnel costs. That we are the largest department in the city, so that can be expected. Um, what I'll do is just highlight a couple of areas on the line items that don't appear on your screen that kind of drive the percentage increases in emergency services, patrol, and investigative services. Um, first and foremost, the, uh, one of the areas that we've seen an, an increase going into 18 is in our telephone budget. Uh, we're reliant on our con service contracts with a multitude of different providers for internet access, GPS access, all those other things that get included uh, with the technology that now we're now using in the squad cars and that reliability. Uh, the other part of it is is that we uh, provide uh, uh, we have a couple of charter lines which are dedicated which cost us more than the average uh, business line would cost for charter and we are we're looking at those going forward but that uh, the telephone budget was uh, was pretty much underfunded the last couple of years and we tried to get that up nearer to what the actual costs are going to be uh, we also have money in there for a backup system that, that's our sprint item uh, that's in our um, telephone budget that provides our backup when everything else goes down usually that system's reliable for communication we can also use it as a two-way communication similar to a radio system um, the other area where we saw a significant increase in the uh, line items would be in the uniform allowance and that's actually for uniform equipment um, we have looked at and, and um, been concerned about the the lack of personal safety equipment that we have for our officers for special event details that they might get involved in. Um, and it, a better way to put it at is it is somewhat considered riot gear, uh, but it is for special events. Um, we've ex you know seen a lot of stuff going around in the country, and protests can uh, spring up for a variety of reasons <coughs> and for a, a variety of causes. but. Um, we, we just are unprepared to even send our officers into a neighboring jurisdiction uh, with a proper amount of equipment to assist if we get called on. Um, the good news of that, I mean, that, that carries the bulk of our increase in our uniform budget, but the good news is, is that just today uh, a grant opportunity is surfacing from the emergency man uh, Wisconsin uh, WEM, Wisconsin Emergency Management, regarding setting up some of these and outfitting these teams in regional uh, aspects. We are uh, planning on teaming with the four other agencies that we train with on a regular basis of our training consortium and writing a grant. So our expenditure may actually go down in this area uh, by the end of, uh, uh, by the middle or end of next year with some grant opportunities. 
But those are particularly two areas that kind of drive our costs. Otherwise, we have modest cost increase, uh, more inflationary than anything. There's a slight bump in the training budget to accommodate uh, the use of training facilities. Those fees are continuing to increase. Uh, but for the most part, uh, we're, we're pretty stagnant. Um, I do want to mention that uh, we did put in for two officers and a half-time clerical position this year. Um, we're, we're getting pretty close to being desperate for these two officer positions. I can tell you from our, um, our PM shifts, they're pretty much running call to call right now, which means there's no extra time to do traffic enforcement or anything like that. That's also becoming the, the, the norm on the day shift as well. And um, so it's becoming very difficult to keep up the demand of services. Uh, we have a lot of requests for traffic enforcement in the city. The only way we're able to do traffic enforcement is when we are lucky enough to get grants from the Department of Transportation and also when we put people out on overtime to specifically do traffic. Um, and it's the sad part of everything that we do when you're when you're call driven you, you just don't have time for discretionary things uh, and for officers to have the time and go out to dedicate to, to, to traffic enforcement um, that's a real concern to us and we're also experiencing some real crunches on the investigative side uh, we've had a third investigator position in the department for many years um, when we had our last uh, retirement about two years ago, that uh, third detective was not replaced. We've carried the place marker in the budget for the last couple of years to have that third detective back. Uh, we haven't filled it because the, the, the needs in patrol have been so great, we just haven't had the opportunity to uh, put another body back into investigation. So uh, we are working our current two investigators to the max, and uh, it, it's, it's going to be uh, um, even more concerning going into the future. As we start to expand, we start to have more calls, and our calls for services are not decreasing. They're increasing every year. So I just wanted to put that kind of information out there for you. Alder person Trull. Thank you. Um, and this question is, is either to the chief or to the mayor. Um, I, I see in the memo that you indicate that the, that you were offering, if, if there were, were an opportunity to bring on the two extra officers, you had uh, capturing some additional savings. And, and in your memo, the, the indicated uh, cost for these two officers was 111800 In the, the document here, we're seeing it's 166. Is that a, is the 166? Does that represent a perhaps more annualized cost, or I'm trying to understand the difference in the the fifty thousand yeah, uh, dollars between what it would. The easiest to way to explain that is we had proposed a reduction of twenty thousand dollars in the overtime budget right. if we got to, and then the rest of the thirty four thousand dollars was money we anticipated that was over budgeted in 2017, but as it turned out, it's being sucked up with increases from. 2018 so it actually kind of vaporized on us pretty quickly and non-existent and so th but that's where that came in and so that was some bad information that we were working on that, that this wasn't there the thirty four thousand dollars additional twenty thousand dollars in overtime would perhaps I, absolutely the twenty thousand dollars in overtime is a is something that we could do if we had the two officer positions but then I think what you do is you take that 166 minus 20 146. Right. This, I'm just trying to get a good, yeah. a good understanding on that. And then, yeah. frankly, the other question to you, and you, you've already addressed it, was going to be, if not now, when? Um, I mean, this, this is, is something that we have been deferring and deferring, and we keep kicking the, the can uh, down the road here. And, and uh, we've obviously added additional, additional property. We've added, added additional businesses. Um, while we're talking about, about getting additional revenue for the new senior uh, project and, and the hotel, they clearly are going to generate additional calls. Yeah. Um, I, I'm, I'm struggling as to why, uh, and I guess I would, we'll, we'll certainly be talking to my, my colleagues here and encouraging us to put this back in the budget. Um, but I just need to know what the real number is. Yeah, and, and the, the real number would be about, I, I, I'm pretty confident we could reduce overtime funding if we had the additional staffing. Um, the other aspect that we look at is um, we mostly rely on, on the, the call data as an indicator of where we are, what we need for staffing levels. But if you look at it period numbers wise, the national average is one per 500 population. So that tells you where our, uh, our sworn staff should be closer to 26 and we're currently at 22. Mm -hmm. so. Overtime is also that difficult piece it is. where you, it seems to be or looks like we can reduce it 
but we haven't been able to do that. Yeah. So it, that's just something that when we look at those numbers a little closer for you, we need to that yeah, I guess that's what I'm looking for is, is, is the best estimate. And then the other part is, is there any additional cost that we would have to bring those two extra officers on in terms of either added vehicles or other, other charges? I want to make sure I understand yeah. that, that if we talk about uh, what, what is our real cost if, if we were to, to, to go ahead and add two more staff people. Yeah, right now we have enough fleet to adequately do that. I, again, that may not be the case going forward in the future, but right now um, we could absorb an additional two officers in. It takes actually to increase one officer per shift, it takes 1.5 personnel. So if you look at a, so for example, our 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. shift, if I wanted to add one more officer assigned to that shift, it takes 1.5 personnel to do that. I was always told that it takes basically six Six person, six staff, or six police officers to, to effectively put one person 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Yeah, at a minimum. Yeah, at a minimum. So, okay. I have all the person Engelberger and then Hirsch. Thank you, Chief. Um, question on and it, this could not only for you but other departments too. It could be for Rodney. It could be for uh, um, Opera House IT. Did we? Were we not? Uh, charging for Pat's time towards IT prior? No, it was just absorbed in our budget. I mean, he just did that as part of his regular duties. So and, I would and have expected like a back out. But yeah, no, it, it, it. There was one back out. Yeah, it, it, yeah, there was, was one back out about $11,000. Yeah. That was for IT? That was yeah. for IT, yep. Okay. And that was transferred into the IT media account? I, I didn't yeah. see it on the numbers here. I mean, well, that's, yeah. The hard part is we didn't, we didn't like take off part of Pat. Yeah. We just simply allowed him to have, I shouldn't say simply, by, by have bringing John on, it gives Pat more time to do police lieutenant work right. and, and not so much IT work. And actually the, the, re the reduction came out of the operating side of the budget and not really on the personnel <coughs> side of the budget because the personnel aspect didn't change, but the operating did as a result of that. More that John becomes acclimated as our as our ET guy and realizes when I talk about him. But the more time then that Pat has to do police department things and you'll know, pull him out of working on the squad laptops all the time, pull him away from doing IT, that's what John's gonna do. So Pat can do more time yeah. with police. And I understand that, but the thing is I, I can't tell that from here by looking at this. The line item might be able to yeah, once you get hopefully, that. Hopefully are we gonna get a line item at some point? Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. The other thing that doesn't show here, too, is, as the chief mentioned, grants. Because those are all in the revenue area. Those are all, um, have to be treated separately. So he does get grants for overtime, and but yet these are all the expenses. That's what you're seeing. All the person, Hirsch. Um, <coughs> kind of going on to what um, all the person, Truel, is saying. I mean, I'd like to see, because we have been picking you guys down the way and, and public safety to me is like one of the most important things in the whole city and so <coughs> and I know we're coming up with fire next but what would happen I mean is it if somehow we were able to get you one police officer in this year and then try to budget it for another one next year would that help I know you were trying to say that you know Oh, well, it, it, it was one point five, but if yeah. we can just start going forward, as opposed to like kicking it further, at least trying to go halfway there, would that help a lot? Yeah, every position that we get would help immensely. I mean, because it frees up, and the 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 sad part is when you're at minimal staffing levels like we are. I mean, it, we can't even fill a vacation request without usually it generating. Uh, overtime to, to fill that request or other mechanisms or you rob from one shift to put another officer on a different shift with a switch. Um, so it, every, imp every officer that you add ha it has an impact on that and it allows us to absorb some of that and also keep those staffing levels at a consistent uh, basis. Our kind of our internal minimum is, is two patrol officers on at all times. Um, all three shifts with an additional patrol officer between 7 p.m. and 3 a.m. 
Um, that again is then augmented by the supervisor that they work different shifts so it kind of overlaps all over the place. But that's kind of our core minimum staffing level. And quite honestly, where we're getting killed the most is days and that early part of PMs till 7, seven o'clock. I mean, the, the, the PM officers from 2 to 7 are, are really, really humping it. I mean, they're, they can barely keep up with calls most of the time. So. so how many officers do you have right now, and how many, based on our population, do you actually truly need? We, we have 22 officers sworn, which includes everybody, including the administration and myself. Um, and again, the national average is one per 500 population. So that simple math, meaning about 26 officers, is where we should be at. So we're actually four shy. Yeah, four shy. Yeah. Of what public safety really needs. Right. So I guess I will at least, you know, try to work with the city to try to find at least one officer salary for this time and hopefully next year we can just add another it, it, it just it doesn't sit right with me that we're that low especially when we're adding another hotel and a senior center which is going to increase the calls yeah. anybody else for the police chief otherwise off the hook for now <laughs> Chiefs in the house. All right, thanks for I guess having having me tonight. <laughs> um. That didn't sound very sincere. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing that I actually want to say is the volunteers actually save you an awful lot of money. Um, we have uh, authorized strength of like forty two. Um, just a minute ago, there was a comment about one to six ratio and the fire side, it's like 11 to three. So we, we, we work, traditionally they could work 24 hour shifts on a rotation, but 11 personnel would only get you three 24 seven, seven days a week. So something to keep in mind, depending on how you calculate it, the savings that the volunteers provide you is anywhere from $750,000 to two and a half million. So with that being said, um, we struggle for help. Um, my budget is pretty static. There isn't anything new that I can propose because I do not have help in order to do it. Since 2012, we've actually had, um, was when the retirement of the, uh, the previous uh, fire technician, um, he was replaced with 12 LTE um, personnel that worked a, a 40 hour, um, they, they filled a 40 hour gap is basically. So they were able to work anywhere from uh, four to ten hours a week, whatever whatever they could do. For the most part, that dwindled because as they sought other employment, the, the numbers of the LTEs just continue to go down and down and down. So today, I'm an authorized strength of two, point, uh, two, two and three quarters in the station during the day. I have 42 possible slots as volunteers in the, in the city of Stoughton. Of the 42, I currently have 35 slots filled. I have it leaves me seven vacancies that I do not have enough applications for to fill. Of the 20, 35 members that I have, 25 of them work in Madison. So when we have an alarm almost virtually every day, last year was 362 incidents, I really struggle for help during the day to do the things that we're being summoned to do. So, and it's not just fires. I mean, we're going to crashes, we're going to rescues, we're going to lifts. I mean, if anybody needs a problem or has a problem, they dial 911 and the expectation is the fire department will, will respond. So we have an obligation to respond. We have an obligation to respond in a timely manner. If we're unable to respond, the county will page the next fire department to respond and take care of whatever emergency you may have in this community. We serve, besides the city of Stoughton, four um, townships that share in this budget process. So the city, I think, is doing 64% of the budget and the remaining 40 some percent or 36 percent is split, split amongst those towns. So um, that you're, you're getting a pretty good value. So um, I guess I'll talk a little bit about option number one. Um, again, 
we work a traditional week, you know, 7.30 to 4.30, Monday through Friday, and we rely on volunteers like all the time. Um, again, with that obligation to respond and not knowing what type of incident we're going to have, when we're obligated to respond, we're expected to perform. Once we're at an incident, or let's say it's a fire, um, we're required to determine cause, whether it's accidental or um, intentional. Um, that's the role of the fire marshal. Um, he actually currently works about 40 hours a week. Um, even with perfect planning, um, I can have an incident at 429 on Friday afternoon that'll compel him to actually have to work five or six additional hours just that day and we still got two more days maybe in that week before the next uh, time period. So our schedule, we are, comp we are constantly using comp and flex and everything like that and he isn't afforded the same opportunities that when a street the person is summoned to plow snow, we pay him for it. When we call in an extra police officer, we pay him for that. Um, the expectation for the fire marshal is that we don't pay him for it, it's just part of his job, um, we, we run the risk of actually violating some federal and state uh, labor laws. So um, that's part of my request for option number one. Um, the option number two, I pretty much, I think I've covered it, I just need help. Um, being behind all the time, um, we've seen 20% increases since 20, 2012 as far as the number of incidents we go to. We're currently at about the 300 mark now for, for incidents so far this year. I have absolutely no reason to believe that our requests for service will continue to increase over years. And what that does for the, even the volunteers, it actually lowers their percentage. So my highest performing firefighters that are volunteers that used to do 80 to 100% uh, attendance or participation are now only able to do 50 to 60 percent at any given time. So I've got people all over the map as far as, you know, how much time they can contribute, but a, a high performing volunteer that we give them a stipend of approximately $1,600 a year is putting in onwards up of 270 hours of service to the community every year. So um, it's a lot to ask. <laughs> so, and I don't want to burn them out. So that's part of my request for trying to relieve the burden on just the volunteer by having some regular staff. Okay. Do you have a question? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Johnson. Uh, Chief, I'm just curious, can the townships also volunteer? Can the town, yeah, we actually, I have firefighters that live in the township. Okay. Um, so yeah, actually all the, I think all with the exception of Rutland, um, but yes, um, our rules actually allow for <laughs> somebody that lives in the town to, to volunteer. So. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. Um, thank you again. This is very disconcerting. I know recently that we um, put in a budget for the townships, what you know, what their pay is, and how are there? I mean, have you talked to them about possibly that? I mean, that we really need to add at least two more players, <coughs> and with that need and your volunteers being stretched, would they be willing to help offset some of the costs of hiring two people, do you think, that we could uh, amend a contract? I'm just trying to figure out, I, again, just like with the police, I don't like our public safety be stretched. This is not a good thing as a council to listen to this and to know that our citizens, you know, are at risk. Um, so I'm just trying to figure out how we can at least get you one full-time employee this year and again next year, you know, as with the police, that we can possibly add on the other two. But the trying to offset some of those costs, is there a way that we could go back to the other townships to help offset some of those costs so we can try to figure out where this money will come from in the budget. I believe you, you can. However, the, the town's contract requires that we, un we undertake those discussions with them first because that increases the amount that they have to budget, obviously, to right. pay for a full-time person as well. So I think that conversation has to start like, like maybe January of this coming year for what it would look like so that they can plan and be a part of the discussion because they pay for a part of the person, for lack of some, another way to say it. Right, yep. Um, 
and then that's a going forward type of a thing, but it's it's a discussion that would take a period of time. It needs to happen. They're, they're already aware of that because okay. um, last night we actually had a meeting with the, the EMS and fire um, yeah. towns where we went over the budget and I told them exact same thing that I've just told you. Yep. So they, they know I'm struggling for people. Yeah. Okay, so if somehow we can find the budget for one person, what is that actual cost? I'm trying to, with you and the chief, so we can figure out what is the true cost that we have to figure out where it's gonna come from, from the budget. So it'll be the wa wages and benefits. So, and when, when you read this, plus yeah, plus turnout gear. I mean, I, I have lots of other costs. To outfit a firefighter is about $2,500 in just protective ensemble. Right. So um, <coughs> where the fire service actually differs just a little, even for just volunteers, where we differ from a law enforcement officer, um, when the police departments hire uh, a police officer, generally that police officer is actually already trained. In my case, I take a civilian and it takes me at least nine months to a year in order to get them enough training and it's approximately another year before they're really well versed in what it takes to, to, to work you know, for a fire department or emergency response agency. So, um, so yeah, so the numbers that have actually been suggested, um, although it says two full-time personnel here in what you're reading, if you read my letter and note, my proposal was actually for one full-time person, increase the existing one person that I have from 30 hours a week to 40 hours a week, and then add another 20 or 25 hour per week person part-time without benefits which would get me a certain number of bodies in order to m maintain or guarantee that we can put together some sort of adequate daytime response. Okay. It's about 75,000 for one person about with benefits at family rate. And just to comment on the, on the interagency agreements that we have, it, it was only a few years ago that, that most of those towns weren't paying anything. Um, so it's, it's, it's a challenge. I've had the opportunity to, to be a part of, of a couple of those discussions. Um, and, and, you know, to the mayor's comment, I, it is something that we can, we can bring up. It's going to take time. Um, there's also realizing that some of those townships also have agreements with other um, areas as well. And so, you know, again, equity, trying to come up with those numbers. No, it's, it's I know. A I'm challenge. just trying to think nope, for going point. forward this year, if we can somehow find $75,000 next year, maybe we can work. Get help with the other municipalities to offset that next $75,000 that we can... It's providing them better service at that point, too. Right. So, sure. yeah. so In our case, it's just to catch up, because we are constantly plagued with catching up with our maintenance, catching up with our records, and just normal tasks, because if, if we do something else, we have to stop doing one thing in order to go do another thing and then come back to it. So there's, I mean, we're, we're trying to be as efficient as possible, but basically whatever priority is looking at us in the face is what we have to deal with. Scott and I have been working with, um, you know, outside the box conversation, outside the box um, ways that we can look at those daytime volunteers. So um, we've had a couple of really good opportunities that have come that Scott and AJ are looking at. Um, but we're also t talking with and talking about those businesses that have employees come to town every day. They might not live in Stoughton, but those folks come to Stoughton, and they're here all day long every day. So the, the concept is to, to get that letter and engage with the companies to say, how do you feel or would you approve if your employees wanted to become a volunteer firefighter, would you approve of them leaving when a call came during the daytime? You know, and just a, a quick conversation that I had at a Chamber of Commerce board meeting immediately brought one call from one of the businesses saying, I'd like to talk to your fire chief a little bit more about that. Clearly, it's up to their employees to decide if they want to become firefighters or not. But at least it opens that door for folks that come to town. Maybe they can serve our town during the daytime. And Scott sees that and has heard of that in other communities as well. When we talk about the shortage in volunteer firefighters and, and EMTs as well, um, as much as we cherish those people and we honor those people, it, it's... I don't want to say crisis, but it's common throughout the United States these days. Okay. Uh, Alder Person O'Connor had a question. Well, I guess that was kind of where I was going with my question is, 
Do you see us becoming more of a full-time fire department with augmentation with volunteers? Um, I don't think we're there yet. Um, part of my reasoning is to actually just fill the gap during the day because I think the, the volunteers actually have a very important role and they fill a, a big role. We do have Mabus, um, you know, we have interoperability agreements with all of Dane County and for that part, half the state. I mean, if, if we need backfill for any large incident, we can have apparatus here from northern Illinois. I mean, the tornado, you know, several years ago was a very good example of that. We had 50 communities actually cycle through this, this city in just a couple of days. So um, they, they met the challenge. We have to meet that challenge from time to time. Um, so um, yeah, I, we, we, we're all sharing resources already. Anybody else have any questions for the chief? Um, does anybody need to take a break or you want to keep going? Keep going. All right, we're done. Keep going. Who's next? Thank you. Bill inspection. Uh, this really represents a allocation of time between the, the different people in our department, as well as the contractual service that we have for commercial electric service inspections that we have as well. So there's a slight increase as a result of that in this area. So there's an increase in in uh, allocation of time. Th this isn't revenue. Okay. This is all just expenses. Okay. You'll see there is a revenue increase in a yeah, future budget that. allocation, but this is the expense side. Okay. Any questions on that? City buildings, uh, this really represents your operational expenses for the buildings, and, and I think most notably you'll, you'll find it's related to utility reductions. Um, our trends in utility costs in a number of our buildings have caused some of these to be decreased in, in expenses. So I think you'll see that's one of the principal changes in the building area. Now, buildings covers a number of number of buildings, but utility costs is, is a major portion of that. Thank you. Any questions for um, Director Shield? All right. Access to public works. All right, so don't want you to be alarmed. There's some pretty wild swings in these line items. Mm -hmm. And basically, most of these are due to employee allocations. Mm -hmm. And so what we did this year is we went through all of our staffing and where they spend their time based on real numbers, um, based on, we didn't use past numbers essentially to do this. We used actual numbers when it comes to timesheets. And so there's some pretty large swings when it comes to where we spend most of our time. But if you look at the bottom line, essentially <coughs> it's only about 1.7% increase in the overall operating budget. So these are tied to um, our allocations for staffing. And the increase is that 2.25 um, increase in employees, employee wages. Um, we did add $3,000 for uh, a PPE uh, line item because we feel like that's very important before that wasn't really funded that was just taken out of general uh, maintenance funds and so that'll be funded separately uh, but for the most part this is a pretty static budget and the wild swings are due to allocations and staffing any questions on on those other person tool uh, just a general one and that's as as we move forward with the uh, potentially the new public works facility have you taken a look or been able to think about what that's going to mean for us operationally uh, will it be you know to start to start to think about what next year's budget next couple of years budgets are going to be is it going to be a, a you know, again, there's been many discussions about the location and other things but I know we've also talked about some of this the, the, the benefits of, of combining some things yeah we've actually when it comes to operating that building our operational costs should actually go down us to be more of an efficient building if we move forward with the, the solar option our utility costs are definitely going to go down we've also been talking with uh, Middleton uh, they built a facility like two years ago and some of their operational costs and what they experience and we've also been working with WPPI on some of the costs that we can realize and we can realistically budget for 
going forward. So that would be the 2019 budget. And so the answer to your question is yes, we have been looking at that and doing some forecasting. All the personal cash. What is it that you do at Troll Beach for $27? Not much. <laughs> and I, that's, uh, so we have VFO codes, and if you can imagine everything that we do, there's a budget for outcomes number. And so that $27 is one of the six line items we have for office supplies. So for $27, we get some office supplies tied to Troll Beach. So it's, it's very important to our, our operation and our proposed community. <laughs> it costs more to process that than it. <laughs> it does. Um, so we did ask for uh, essentially two uh, additional employees for our forestry uh, crew. Uh, we have over 6,000 uh, trees in our inventory uh, for our urban forest. And right now we have one person to essentially manage and maintain that uh, urban forest for us. Uh, essentially we use streets crew members we have six streets crew guys, and we use them to do forestry work um, to, to supplement our forestry crew that we don't have. Uh, we also use contracted services, which is our option B, is to increase that amount by $56,000 uh, to support essentially a, a, a trimming program. Um, right now we have no program in place. Uh, we're working, John uh, Kempinen and, and I are working on putting together a, a program for trimming so that we can keep up in our urban forest. Uh, trimming is, is critical when it comes to a, a risk management and liability standpoint. We have to keep up on our, our trimming for trees and keep them in, in a healthy state. Um, so to do so, we, propose incre we proposed increasing our contracted services if the employees, increasing employees wasn't an option. So if these aren't funded, we would still work towards doing a, a, a plan when it comes to trimming. Uh, essentially, you want to touch every tree every five years. So we have essentially the, um, the city broke up into five different segments, and we would, every year, that segment ideally would be trimmed. And so to do that, it would, it would take that funding level. That's what we base that on. Any so, questions on those? Yeah, at the current pace, is you're behind. Yeah. How many years would it take you to get caught up with, based on the static budget? So based on the static budget, we would never catch up because we would never be able to essentially infinity, uh, infinity and beyond. Yeah. So <laughs> essentially, we we're, we're doing the best we can with the staff that we have, and also utilizing some contracted services funds that we currently have. We we have forty five thousand dollars in contracted services. That's also for taking down trees that are hazardous um, and we also will be using some of those funds to do some trimming but not to where the at the level that we need to, to have it at to adequately uh, maintain our urban forest so if we were to add the positions that you're requesting then more how long would it take to get I would say five years as we go through that cycle so it take us essentially five years to work our way through the the city to touch every tree in, the, in those uh, segments. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just for the current, if we grow, there'll yep. be more to do. Yep, we would add to those segments or create another one. The reason why we chose five is because that's the ideal length of time that you want to let elapse before you maintain that tree again or, or touch that tree again. So that's the cycle that we want to be in is a five-year cycle to maintain our urban forest. Any questions about that? Thank you. I could. Um, do you want to just do community commitment real quick? Because I know the senior center director isn't yeah, able to make it this center, evening. Um, not able to be here, but I can do this one, and then we'll switch back to um, parks. To parks. So community commitment. Um, this seven thousand three hundred dollars includes five hundred dollars that we give to support our museum every year and $6,800 that's used toward um, holiday promotion and those are the the lights and the wraps that we see downtown during our holidays that's our community commitment fund 
It's now your turn. I did, I did have a question for you. You had mentioned earlier that um, we couldn't get insurance for the fireworks. Mm -hmm. if, if that was something that we contracted out and they had their own insurance, would we still be able to, to do that? Well, if they were able to, um, if they were able to provide insurance and list the city as a second insured, mm -hmm. but again, as you look through all these needs, not wants, but needs of our city, that's not something, that, again, my choice, right? Mm -hmm. Those weren't something that I categorized as a high need. I understand I, I would that. much rather provide one of these other departments with some things that they need. And I understand that. So last year when it was contracted out, did they, they provided their own insurance? Right, and that was through the, the Fair Board, Fair Association. Right. I always say it wrong. But that was through them and their insurance. Have you had any communication with them about next year and what the city's, I don't even know what the fourth lands on You know, I year? have not. I know that they're aware of my um, dissatisfaction, if you want to call it that way. Um, Eight minutes for ten thousand or eight thousand dollars didn't do it for me. Yeah, I don't think they were too pleased with the vendor. No, they either. were not happy with it either. But it's just um, not something that I felt I needed to, that I could dedicate our li very limited resources toward. And I understand that, but the, yep. the question is: is I know a few years ago you were able to to fundraise to pay for them. Yep. If somebody were willing and able to do that with a contract a company they could still do the fireworks as long as they have the insurance as long as they had the insurance to cover it you bet i mean that's my understanding i should say okay mm -hmm. thank you it's a wednesday 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 okay. so the the park's maintenance budget is is really awfully stagnant um you'll notice the park's mowing uh, had 27,377 in it essentially moved that up into the park maintenance fund um, so that's where that that zeroed out amount comes from so essentially we made it easier on ourselves when it came to the budget <coughs> not having it in a separate line item um, and then we did increase the uh, broadleaf control for our parks um, i do hope that in the future this number will come down for the the amount that we use on our parks to treat our turf um, Essentially, we're going through an IPM uh, integrated pest management program, and we have high hopes that this is going to reduce the amount of, of pesticides that we use, uh, thus reducing the cost and some of the environmental impacts. So we did increase it this year just to get to a point where our weed pressures are down in our green spaces, and hopefully once those uh, weed pressures are down below 30% or 15%, depending on the park, that we can reduce the amount that we use uh, this, this line item. Well, all the person true. Um, Brett, uh, how many acres of parkland did we add? 19. Thank you. So it's a combat that through the CIP process we did add an additional uh, 12 foot mower. Um, and so uh, it's, it's definitely as time goes on, it does take more effort to um, maintain these properties. Other person Johnson and then Kittleson and then I thought I saw somebody over here maybe. I thought um, at one of the meetings we had to buy a lot uh, another lawnmower that was like seventy or ninety thousand. That's a twelve foot mower okay. that we acquired. So that that extra you know a bigger mower is going to help us to maintain that nineteen acres that we're going to be taking on the next two years. So that was the purpose of purchasing that. Because we increased our park size so yep. much? Over the next two years, as new parks come online, it's about roughly 19 acres that we're going to be taking on for green space to maintain. It also helps, and Brett and I have talked about that before, it helps because we know that staffing is at a, at a prime or at a minimum. By buying those larger pieces of equipment, you can get more done <laughs> with, with the same amount of staff. Or Correct. Did you have something, all the person kills it? Okay. Anybody else? Well, 
I actually feel a little guilty um, not having a, um, any needs. I mean, we're we're actually pretty comfortable with um, our staffing, and I'll just get into a little bit about that. Um, in our bottom line, we're we're asking with all of our four groups together. When you figure in the revenues, we're figuring that. Um, we're increasing at about $854 this year. So that's pretty close to even. But when I think about how we can do that, and, and this could just sound like a, I don't know, a cheap suck up move, but every single department in our city helps us get where we get. I mean, you can go right down the list from everything from the clerk to the finance department. But So it's like we have this huge extension of all these people that help us do our job. So we really benefit, I think, probably is more than any other department from everybody else doing stuff for us. So I just want you to know that when you're considering, you know, the size of our budget and but how, how we get there. But actually none more important than um, the parks and the street department with Brett and Pat. And so we're out trying to create things all the time to give people more things to do and more places to do them. But every time we do that, those guys have to find a way to get it done on the outside. They have to mow something new. They have to line another field. And so um, so maybe the good thing about our budget not growing a lot uh, hopefully leaves room for you to be able to help them get where they need to get because that's really where the growth and cost that affects us is, is through parks maintenance. So I just wanted to get that out first before we kind of got through this. So. Um, if you look at the recreation side, there's not a lot of big changes there. I'm not sure if you um, want a lot of detail. If you, I, I really like the, to talk about the revenues, and I wish there was a column to show that because well, what we do is really based on when we grow, the revenues grow, and we try to keep it that way. So on the recreation side, um, our bottom line is we're going to be plus $6,000 on the good side this year in that area. Um, Troll Beach will be will cost the city um, an extra $331 this next year when you take the, yeah, our increases minus the revenues. Um, the Parks and Open Space Management, that's uh, most of my salary. It's park development. Um, we get some revenues from um, the usage of the parks through shelter usages and, and ball diamond reservations. Um, that one will cost the city about $1,900 total, more than last year. And then... Um, yeah, uh, the youth center comes up next. So, um, I guess I can give you any details on any of those things that I just said if you ask, um, but I didn't want to take up your time just talking. Okay. So this is our youth center budget. Uh, again, when we look at our, our big picture in our department, we count everything. And it, it is a, if you look at the bottom line, it looks like a big increase. And I just kind of want to get into the, what that is. Um, earlier, the mayor had mentioned a $5,000 um, increase for the for staff salaries. Um, there's also there's a miscalculation based on last year's number in the comparison of about $2,000 for my allocation so you could probably take off um, 2000 off that bottom line and bring it down to 11 and then our revenues countering that that we bring in are at 47.20 so uh, earn our I'm sorry they're at um, 76.08 bringing the cost to the city on the youth center at about 47.20 this year over last year so that's our biggest growth area but in the big picture with the other things, um, it, it fits in good. Another reason that um, for that increase is I found it um, a lot easier to generate um, revenue through fundraising in our sponsorship program than I did when I was fundraising for youth center activities. Um, the friends of the youth center are raising about 120000 each year. So I felt I was competing with them a lot of times for the same kind of money. I, I thought it was better to let them go after it and then focus our, our attention more on the revenues that we could get through our sponsorship program for our gazebo music and the swimming pool, which we were able to um, budget for next year at about $14,000. And that's a big reason why our recreation budget is on the plus side this year. Thank you. Tom. 
Yep. What, what is the 169,000 for? I mean, we don't pay the salary of the youth center director, right? Or do we? It portion or no? It's there, but it, it um, it's coming in as a revenue side, so it doesn't show the revenue. It's we're paying it, and it shows it on the 100, expense. 169,038. Does that's that's city money, right? Yep. And what does it go for? It goes What's for, it every, for? everything down there. Like what? Uh, the salaries of the staff. Um, I think is the, no the building maintenance is, is not a portion of your staff in here or no part of is my salary, salary is in there. Yes. The programs. So th how many how many staff people do we have down there? I, I was One, under the impression we had a, a director and that was it. But we've got there's more. three part time staff. Okay. Um, so let's see if I can break that down. Comes out as an expense. There's also a revenue that covers the majority. Right. Yeah. Like I said before, uh, like about 120,000 just off the top of my head comes back to the city for that. So that's, that's where it's it's coming back to cover it. So you can see the. Okay. So what's donated from outside offsets this. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Leaving um, about forty-five thousand dollars, nine ninety-five is the city's share of running the youth center. Part of that is the basic. So I mean the, the 169 isn't all city money then? No. Just on paper it, it is until you outside, bring the revenue. It includes back. all the outside money. So I mean that this, this is just to me why is it in our budget? Expense, this is just the expense side. We're not reflecting the, the all the income. Side. So I mean so so the answer is it is this, it is city expense. We're just being reimbursed through right. the donations and the like. Mike, it it came from uh, the development of that whole it program. Can't be part of the tax roll then, if, if there's private money involved in that. Your numbers aren't making sense to me here because I don't see the breakdown. Well, I don't see a breakdown here. Yeah, we'll get one. Basically, I can I can just say that in the end. And I, I'm not just saying about this one. I'm saying about all of these. Yeah, we'll get that to you at the end of the night. We wanted you to listen to the services we provide first. And then we'll get you all the detail on it. So it's not doesn't make sense unless you see the big picture. That's first. right. And then we'll bring it right, down. Right, it doesn't. Well, if I may, please. Well, if I'm I may. agreeing with you. I, okay. All right. Older person Hirsch, did you have something? No, I, I I guess I was just in agreement is that it's really hard to look at this budget without it being line items because we don't know the revenues, we don't know the true cost, we don't know. The true expenditures. It's, it's, it's really hard to determine when we're talking about needs of where it can actually come out of when we don't have the line items and understand what goes into each of these numbers. Right. These are telling you the true cost of the services that we provide, and we'll get you the line items when you leave tonight. But we wanted you to see the services that each of our departments provide and the cost of each of those services. Because the line items don't make sense unless you know how it all builds into a service. And having, it'll get there. It'll having get said there that, yet. though, having said that, and that's the, the challenge is, as Tom was just making his presentation, he was talking about net and cost yes. and things like that, which, which yes. effectively, no disrespect, Tom, but <coughs> virtually everything you said was, was kind of, to Alderman Engelberg's comment, too, it was kind of useless because we don't, I mean, you're talking about true net and where we're at and, and, and savings, and, and so nothing ties out for us. So that's that's why it's a, it's a challenge for all of us. Yep. It's yep. not just you. It's it's yep. all these sheets. You just happen to be right. the one that we're just no, up to here with it. <laughs> that's all. Make an example of Well, okay. 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 But it's like, true. But it wouldn't I, be me if Tom didn't say something to me. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't raise his hand. He's good. I think Alderperson Johnson has a question. She did. Go ahead. We didn't do this last year, did we? Yes, we, we did. We looked at the lines, No, we? we did this as well as the lines. Yeah. Okay. We did both, okay. Okay. which is what we're going to do again this year. It's just format a little yep. different, but it was we're the same. We're just walking through it. Yep. Okay. So. Same stuff last year. Okay. Anything else on what he's... So, John. it includes... It, it, the, the cost includes some things that are offset, but it also includes like the cost of the building, the rent, and those sort of mm -hmm. things. It's all in here. Okay. About the building maintenance no, I'm talking about the, the rent. Well, the, the rent goes into the building maintenance yeah. fund, I believe. It goes right in the fund? Yeah, yep. so that's okay. not showing on here. All right. There still is a, a building maintenance line there, and uh, 
Rodney and his staff have been able to okay. produce that, which has been really good. good job down there. Um, his staff takes care of it really well. <coughs> well, and, and it's important to remember we do pay quote unquote rent, and the rent of that building is the previous year's taxes. Right. So there is a, there is a, right, that's part of the expenses in there as well. Right. Well, it's our equipment. Any other questions about the youth center? Otherwise, we'll try to keep moving here. Thanks, Tom. IT makes us the debut. Mm -hmm. And we Welcome all promised to help him. We're kind of throwing him into the... This, this is the okay. process that... I was ill prepared for. <laughs> well, either are we, so don't worry about it. You can pull up the microphone so we can hear you. Oh. <coughs> Welcome, John, by the way. Oh, well, thank you very much. Um, it's been a pleasure. Um, like the, uh, the Public Works Department, my variations are all over the place as well, just because it's a, a newly formed uh, department as well as combined department and consolidated services and buildings that we're discovering through this entire process. The, um, the first line item on here obviously was, you know, in 2017, $115,000, which was just allocated mm -hmm. at, at one point just because it was unknown what was really going to be needed once uh, the IT director came on board. And then the interdepartmental media services we're seeing a 20% increase in there. Uh, a lot of that is just reallocations of, uh, of salaries, which is one of the things that I've been hearing here, and also just additional um, services that we're providing. The time, the uh, salary proportions for budget and for outcomes is playing a role within some of the services that we're providing other departments. Um, Interdepartmental phone and services administrations is up uh, quite a bit here because we're pulling in all of the different bills that have been going to the various departments. They're all going to be consolidated under IT. So instead of getting, you know, just a very small portion, we're taking all of them and then reallocating them out. Also, within that amount of money, we've uh, signed a maintenance agreement in our own phone system just to make sure that we have that uh, security in place in the event that there's ever a... a a failure of services where we can get everything up and running as quickly as possible. One of the uh, things as far as the web page design and admin, that has gone up uh, substantially as well. The feedback that I've gotten from either all the people, other uh, fellow department heads, and also some feedback from citizens is our website. So I'm looking at um, having that completely redesigned, making it much more user-friendly. And we had uh, a conversation with another company, CityGov, uh, to take care of uh, streamlining it and making it more uh, efficient, as well as uh, providing a better communication avenue for changes that can be pushed out to either citizens, user groups, City Council members, for instance, any time that there's a change within the uh, uh, budget or the uh, meeting packets, as soon as that change is put in there, all of the altar people would get a email notifying them of the change. Just things that are going to make it much more user friendly. Information technology is uh, made up, I believe, of mm -hmm. salary and benefits. Mm -hmm. there? Okay. Yep. And then the community media production on here, that's taking into consideration a 2.5% increase in the salaries as well as a reallocation of some time. We're starting to utilize more of our part-time staff for some of these events so we're not paying you know, a higher salary for an individual to you know, tape the recordings or go to the events. Um, all in all, it's a 7.9% decrease from 2017 to 2018. Go ahead, I'll look for some tool. Um, I, the one one comment you made, I, I can appreciate the fact that you're pulling in a lot of different budgets and the like, um, but when you were talking about the uh, interdepartmental media, media services, you indicated that there's additional services. What would be helpful is to understand what those additional services are 
Well, it's it's not more additional services, I should say. It, it's, um, I guess, Tammy, where did we come up with some of this? Because it was just a reallocation of things that we were finding that were getting charged. Right. Wrong departments, softwares that were being charged against other departments. We're finding all of these different things where we can... Okay, and that's that's where, where I guess I'm I'm coming from. You know, if and I, and forgive me, it was I, I thought you had actually indicated that you you said that you, that that in that category it also included additional services. I can appreciate us trying to grab funds from a lot of different places. I just was curious as to whether we are effectively adding additional services to things that we've done this year, and if the co if so, what the cost is. I mean, I can appreciate the fact that. Um, the mayor has indicated we've got what an extra fifteen thousand dollars in for the web pitch. I, I can get that. I just didn't know if there was anything else that you were. Yeah, it's just the more additional community events that we're doing. You know the the. And the line items will probably make more sense too, once you get those. Uh, you know, right now the only things that were transferred in from outside were uh, software costs from the PD about eleven thousand. The website um, it used to have its own. Uh, accounts numbers and we combined the two of those we moved all of the website costs into IT now that was about nine thousand and then the twenty five thousand dollars from the finance department so all of that was built in on top of what was funded last year and, and that's really, really the challenge this year I mean we realize that that there's a lot of things that have been going on all I'm mm -hmm. coming to that point is at the end of this year we're going to actually have a baseline that we can actually start working from and all I wanted to know yes. is if there's anything else in terms of any new initiatives or additional like back to I guess I was specifically picking up on a comment you made about the yeah. additional services are we doing something that, else that because we're talking about about other areas that that are um, uh, very honestly uh, when we've had this discussion about public safety it's it's if we're adding adding some media services that I frankly would like to know what those are and what they cost if we're just really doing the, the the first time here in condensing the budget and getting ourselves a good baseline to work from uh, that, that is good it, it's because we are pulling all of these things in here to find out where exactly are we so we do have that good baseline uh, to start the beginning of the year that's good that we talked about under the, the police chief's budget in that we're taking it sounds bad but we're taking some it things out of the hands of a police lieutenant out of the hands of a few others it doesn't mean we're getting less of a lieutenant. The lieutenant's just going to be doing more lieutenant things mm -hmm. and John and his department are going to be picking up some of those items and doing them. You're right, all the virtual for combining this department and making a baseline this mm -hmm. year. And you know, see how it goes moving forward. It's gonna go well. It will go well. It's going well. Right. Okay. So I have, I have uh, Chief Lack, Alder Person Mayaski and whoever else after that. I just wanted to comment briefly and John's only been here a short time and we've already seen uh, just a super amount of efficiency increases and our discussions are ongoing and we're looking at all areas of, of stuff. I mean, and the PD is going to be, it is one of the heaviest users of the IT position right now and I don't see that getting any better going into the future but uh, the impacts that John's made already and, and the discussions that we've had about streamlining processes in the future. So I, I think you're going to see a lot more of that coming as a result of not so much going into the 18 budget, but what changes are made in 18 that'll be reflected in 19. Uh, that's where the real the real uh, uh, benefits going to really start to shine out um, because again it, it, it takes time to look at all these different things and get comfortable with knowing what they are and uh, but I just I had to comment that John has just done a phenomenal job and he's already streamlined a bunch of stuff for us already uh, and has helped us with our connectivity in the squad cars and has just been uh, really a godsend all the way through so I just wanted to make that comment thank you chief lack all the person by asking I just wanted to extend what uh, Alder, Alder Trull was saying was that, um, that you know we are, this is a baseline and I would really encourage you to look at the utilities especially when it comes to their phone system uh, because that should be part of the baseline and it's and let's not lose sight of the fact that it is a city department and it is not a standalone mm -hmm. uh, entity that needs to be integrated into the city and I think with the IT uh, Specifically, you know, we have a lot of redundancies, I, th I believe, between those, between that department and the rest of the city. And hopefully um, that your department will start to take over that. And oh, I agree. Start to, yes. And start to um, pull it back into the realm of manageability. 
Yes. And also hopefully get us some savings. And I just wanted to echo Alder Person Majewski's thoughts. I, I do think that there is an opportunity in the area of IT to create some efficiencies between the city and utilities. And, you know, one thing um, that you mentioned was the website design and support. And, I mean, they have a website, we have a website. You know, it seems to me that there's some overlap there and some opportunity to take a look at. And I don't know the individuals that manage them, so I don't know what their their levels are, if, if they're compatible and interchangeable. But I certainly think those are the kind of conversations I'd like to see you have. And I certainly support you in those efforts. Well, thank you, and I agree. Anybody else? That was painless. <laughs> from your side. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the planning department, a um, couple of pages here. Um, the net result ultimately is really a minimal increase and it really relates principally because of the, the proposed wage uh, and wage benefit um, adjustment to the, to the matrix. Um, but you'll see some reallocation of personnel time within the department obviously reduction in information technology hours um, not going to zero yet <laughs> um, but hopefully able to provide some valuable insight for, for John as he moves forward um, if there's anything specific that stands out at you let me know and I'll respond to that Rodney I've got to ask just, you just I, I'm are you looking at different numbers than I am you, it's a slight decrease you're right decrease. decrease sorry okay yeah thank you sorry you're right Kudos is what you're supposed to say, right? I was wondering if you were looking at a different sheet than, oh, than we had. You're right. We're looking at Correct. one that says $11,000 less. Thank you. And I wanted to put a shout out for the, uh, you know, earlier we talked about the landmarks and the, the money that is budgeted. Basically, it's a grant for somebody that has a historical building that wants to do some work on it, which is, you know, can be costly. And I know that this year the recipients are are going to do some great things with it. And the uh, old movie theater is certainly one of the beneficiaries. And there's some others as well. So I would encourage us as we go forward the budget to try to leave that in there. I did have one question that I want to ask about the, the IT. And this is for Tammy. Is that, so we had budgeted for this year, you know, to fill the position. And the assumption was we we're going to fill it the first of the year. Unfortunately, we weren't able to do that. So the question is, is what became of the, the funds that were budgeted this year until that position was filled? They're still there. And what John is talking about, and he's going to be bringing forward soon, will be some potential changes to some of the servers, some equipment that he's going to uh, pursue purchasing with your approval. So if anything, those funds would be utilized to fund that. So it would be like a budget amendment or how, uh, what no. is the process for that? Well, because it would be there, used within, no it would be used within his budget. It would probably come out of the IT expense and then um, the, the wages account would be way under and the IT expense would be over, but the bottom line would still be under what was budgeted. Okay. Thank you. All right. So I think we're at a good spot to, to stop for tonight. Um, I mean, if you're, if you're finished with planning, um, transfer to other funds is coming up next. I know we have the Senior Center. Cindy wasn't able to be here tonight, and she'll, she'll be here um, next week, though. So we can go through the Senior Center, the Opera House, Library, EMS, Stormwater Utility, and then Tammy will take us through some transfers and, and other types of um, budgets next, next time. If it goes as um, smoothly, I guess, or as quickly as tonight, um, we'll see. Maybe we won't need the 26th, but I think we'll be able to finish up on the report outs fairly um, efficiently next Thursday night, and then on to some more Q&A. Okay. Anybody else have any thoughts or questions? And then you said you were going to get us the line. Yep. We have those line items. Tammy's got them right there. Right. Those will be posted on the website as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Awesome. Yep, all of this Excellent. tonight that you so have seen will be on the website. Uh, it's going to be a big link. And move we'll to probably adjourn. be a couple. All right, so I heard a motion to adjourn. <laughs> and a second.
Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. None opposed. <laughs> Surprise.